Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support the show, go to patreon.com slash glassstandmedia. Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and welcome to episode 172 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. Today, I'm joined by the man who was certainly on time for everything today, Lord Cognito. We, you know, Cog and I, for those who need a little backstory, we usually trade places with being very late each week. This week, it was my turn to be <laughs> not just late, but extremely late. It's almost five, and we plan to record at three. So, Cog, how are you today with the ample time I gave you to enjoy your afternoon? I'm good. I'm just I'm just crawling out through the fallout, baby. Crawling <laughs> out through the fallout. That's all. It's a good time. It's a busy time for both of us, but um, a good time. You know, just you know, a lot of things going on, a lot of planning. I know mm-hmm. you got things going on. I got a thousand things going on, but it's a fun time. So I am excited. We got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, I uh, it's been a it's been a busy week for sure. This is uh, I was telling you before we we started recording recording how this is just basically with the launch of Retro Rewind. We knew it was a bit of a throw ourselves into the fire moment. Like we knew our first week. Oh, we're going to have to binge a a big TV show to cover it, which is the fallout season one. We're like, let's we get to see like what's our schedule like when we do that, because it's not going to be the first or the last time we do that. It's like, okay, we managed really well there. Like that was fine. And then this week it was about. All the the fallout, as you said earlier, from fallout, uh, covering that extensively on Mr. Maddie while navigating everything. And it's been a challenge, but it's been good. You you realize you can't get everything perfect, like on content and on consistency with everything. Like we did meal prepping, like everything's been good, but I've slacked a bit on exercising. So I'm still trying to figure that out because I, I, you know what it is? My Peloton shoes are too small. My toes are going Mm. numb. So I got to up the size on those and uh, start figuring that out. But then Mm. it'll be a little easier to hit that exercise every day because then it's like I finish, it's five, get some dinner, then it starts to get dark. And so, yeah, that's where we're at right now. But it's been Mm. a a rapid moving week. Uh, This is going to be definitely a Fallout themed episode with the TV show out. Uh, 90% of our write-ins were about the Fallout show, about the Mm. games, about where to start, about the state of the games about what's going on with the timeline. We're going to try to keep it spoiler free. Of course, we'll warn you if there's going to be spoilers. Cog and I have both finished the show. Uh, if anyone's, I don't know if you talked, you talked about it on ILP, right? So that's your thoughts are available there. Yeah, I talked, uh, but I only talked about four episodes in at that point. I had not finished Got the it. series. Got but it. yeah, now it, it is done, baby. We Got ready it. To nice. Talk. I'm excited to talk to you about it. Yes. Yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah. I had bars for you on ILP yeah. too. I was like, All right. There's a part of me that I was like, I'm glad we haven't spoke until we record Duke mm-hmm. because I am dying to speak to him. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm excited mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. you can check out Cog's thoughts on ILP. You can listen here, of course. And then I have a full review of season one up on Retro Rewind if you want to check that out, uh, which has been going great. Better than we nice. expected. It's actually nice. growing faster than Retro Rebound did at its launch which is wow. crazy to see really wow. crazy to see but uh, i'm happy people are believing in the vision we're doing really well and i'm very proud of it and, and Locke's doing amazing josh is doing amazing Simon's doing amazing so yeah Salute just the team. very excited about what the the retro brand holds mm. in its future but enough of that cog we have a couple of uh warm-up write-ins one for me one for you first one comes from johnny questicles what's up dukes my ears perked up when i heard maddie casually mentioned that he's reading the stormlight archive I'm just curious what your thoughts are, Matty. It's a ridiculously dense story. It could be a bit of a slog, but I think it's pretty incredible. Also, have you read any other Brandon Sanderson books, knowing more of his other stories will pay off as you get further into Stormlight? This is my first run in with Brandon Sanderson. So, yeah, I, I read Way of Kings. Uh, I had the audiobook half it because my friends had already finished reading it uh, way before me because they started before me. And so I was playing catch up and they were getting impatient. So I had to audiobook the second half. But right now we're. 250 pages into words of radiance Mm -hmm. i'll I'll see this like it's all right like i (laughs) i I like the challenge of reading a massive 1200 page book like that's more what i'm here for yasna is an amazing character i love shalon like their stories are great i don't like kaladin much at all i'm hoping he gets better throughout the series but he is like his chapters are so boring Mm. so i'm hoping it's like basically cog if you're not familiar like the the trails of books like this is a, a right now it's four books in fifth book coming out this year uh it's a massive book series it's gonna go on for a while so that's what kind of interested me i went oh okay 
I love big stories. Let's see what's going on here. Nice. Uh, Dalinar is an amazing character. There's a lot of good stuff here. I'm also not a big fantasy head, but that's why. Like, I always read Star Wars books. That's my problem. I'm always reading Star Wars books. So even if I hated this, which I don't, I like it. I I want to stick with it because I need to read something else. For once. Like, <laughs> I, I need to stop reading these Star Wars Legends <laughs> books and everything. I literally, you know what, what my game plan, I started reading Way of Kings and I was like, okay, let me start reading the Thrawn trilogy, right? Like as if I'm weeding myself off a drug. And then I started a High Republic audio book. I'm like, I'm fucking sick, dude. What's wrong with me? So yeah, <laughs> uh, Stormlight Archive has been solid. I've been enjoying it. A lot of bright spots. I do agree pacing can be a bit off at times uh Ooh. some pretty pointless interludes all that fun stuff but cog we have a write in for you yo, yo. papa flow writes hey dukes haven't watched the wonderful retro rewind review i know what maddie thinks of the fallout show but i'm curious to hear cog's thoughts as a person who has never been able to get over that bethesda studio janky feel this show is a godsend i've always found the world of fallout enticing and now i've got something to go love with it I feel like this might collectively as an industry or it feels like maybe collectively as an industry, we've been underestimating the positive impact these live actions can have. Have yourself an okie dokie kind of day. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to hear from you from the top yeah. general thoughts. Do we like the show, sir? Man, um, not only do I like it, I absolutely love it. I, I, I didn't. I remember an old Duke we had and I remember there was some write-ins from the director and. I was, I was, my only trepidation, because we saw the trailer, we like, yo, preview mm. our trailers look good. We were like, okay, they got the feels looking right. Yeah. But it was just one comment. I was like, I, I got to see how they handle the source material. And I, I remember it was something said that I snapped about out the, the fans, right? Yeah. And yeah, I was just said, like, I don't know about listening to the fans and trying to please them. It's not worth it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Like fine wine, by the way. Great exactly. Yeah. Because it's funny because now I'm like, yo, there is a difference when source material is respected. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. I know we're going to get into the weeds later with, the, with a ton of questions, but my overall views is, man, this is absolutely fantastic. I was blown away and I knew it hit me because it became a situation where I was like, okay, people like Attic and a couple of people like, yo, did you watch it yet? Did you watch it yet? Because he hit me and he's he's huge Fallout guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, nope, I'm going to get to it. I'll watch one episode, whatever, whatever. One turned into four straight. Yeah. Couldn't put it down. And I'm like, yeah, they got it. So we will get into the weeds later. But sure. the top level view is, oh, they did that. Shout out to God Howard. Shout out to but the shout out to Amazon, whoever is a part of us, which is one of the Nolan boys. I'm yeah, hearing Jonathan that. Nolan. Yeah. Their brothers, he's the bro brother of the other Nolan I'm hearing yeah. now. Christopher Nolan. Yeah, they y'all did that, and we will talk about this. Yeah, they killed it, man. I absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. We have a ton of fallout right yes, into our yes, number yes. one story this yep. week. We have a fallout news story soon. We have a lot of fallout this episode, yeah. so we'll talk more about it. No doubt. One more write in, we'll get into the news. Alex Patsy writes, Hello, Dukes. Wanted to write into the Premier Health is Wealth podcast. I love how he says that. I just start off by saying, I have an exercise this week. <laughs> to ask for strength in my upcoming challenge. Over the last 10 months, I've been serious about the gym grind. Prior, I was an on-off focus for years and knew it was time for a permanent change. When it comes to my challenge on 420, I'll be attempting my Spartan race, the 5K sprint. In the words of Goku, share your energy with me. Citizens of the universe, lend me your energy. My goal is to see how many obstacles I can clear and not focusing on completion time since I'll be in the non-competitive heat. Thanks for all the great content. And you guys are the best duo in the biz. I hope you have oh. a health is infinite wealth. Mm. Kind of day. Shout out to That's Alex, boss. man. About to do an ultimate challenge here. I've never yeah. considered one of these, but that is admirable. And I think he's going to absolutely smash it. Yeah, I think he's going to do his thing. I like the mindset. I like, mm -hmm. you know, Spawn Race is a no joke. And I like that he's put himself into the non-competitive heat kind of thing first to get a feel of what he yes. can do. And I think it's just a matter of just getting out there and pushing ourselves. I think a lot of times we get too competitive with people mm -hmm. when it comes to either exercise, lifting, or, you know, even if you do a cardio next to you, worry about whatever, do what you're capable of doing first yeah. and focus on yourself. And that's the hardest thing to do sometimes. So salute to Alex. Yeah, you got to hit us back. And let us know, you know, how that went for him. That is super dope. I like and I like health is infinite wealth. I, I do like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It it's awesome to see where your mindset's at too, because I I I share a similar mindset in the gym. Like I don't when I go, <laughs> I don't live a, a heavy amount, but I try to just focus on my own personal progression and like, okay, what am I feeling? Am I comfortable with this? Am I feeling good? 
And having your head in that space will lead to the healthiest life possible for sure, because you're just not going to let others disrupt your energy, disrupt how you're feeling, which is good. And so, yeah, just the way you're going into this, the non-competitive heat, maybe one day you do compete, but going in non-competitive, just can I do this? Which you yes. can. Uh, really awesome. Just, you know, not completion time. It could take you forever, man. Who cares? Like you're doing it. You're doing something that very few people do. So congrats Fact. to you. Best of luck. Let us know how it goes once it's done next week. No doubt. All right. With that, we get into the gaming news. Started off with God Powered. He talked about an Elder Scrolls show, and here's what he had to say when speaking to IGN, quote, I don't know. There's nothing in the works. Everybody asks like about Elder Scrolls, and I keep saying no also. And I would approach these. I'll probably say no. You, you never know if something's going to click, but I think this really came out of we think things are aligning to do a high quality job. It wasn't forced. It was kind of a natural relationship. And hey, this sounds really cool, as opposed to we should have a show, right? It never came from that. I can't predict the future, but this has been one of the most enjoyable projects I've ever done. And we're just over the moon, everybody in the studio, with seeing it this way. End quote. Dude, he's back. Everyone's loving Todd Dude. Howard again. Dude, <laughs> I was reading the comments. I was seeing people on Twitter like, this is how it's done. He gets it. In this post-Starfield world, didn't think I'd be seeing that so soon. But, Cog, your thoughts on an Elder Scrolls show not happening because we got to make sure we do it right if we ever do it at all. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that that lineage, you have to respect it, right? You mm. you. There's so much associated with Elder Scrolls that you cannot fumble the bag. You can't make hasty mistakes. And as we see with the Fallout show, right, when there's quality, when there's there's respect to lore, there's his involvement. And one thing I'm, I have to respect with God Howard, like when he puts his hands on things for the most part, he gets a clear direction of where they want to go. And now this kind of even gets me more amped up for um Indiana Jones, you know what I'm saying? Because we know yeah. how much yeah. he cares about it, right? And when he has his finger on the pulse of it, he's directly involved. And I know Starfield's a lot of controversy, but a lot of people mm-hmm. agree as far as mm-hmm. player <laughs> engagement says <laughs> that a lot of people still enjoyed that game for its flaws or what have you. And I know it didn't hit for everyone, but the majority of people did enjoy enjoy the game. So, yeah, this is he he's on a roll right now. I'm, I'm just happy to see what's happening right now, just for Bethesda as a whole. Like, I'm really happy to see what's yeah. going on. But I like statements like this. Elder Scrolls is super revered, super special, and it's so much to it. Morrowind, Oblivion, and Tamriel is huge. Yeah. There's so many. Not saying it can't be done, but you just can't just rush it for the check and have some whack live action yeah. track and yeah. besmirch the great Elder yeah. Scrolls. So we let, let let them cook. Let them yeah. cook with what they do. I got another request that someone wrote in that I will be on God Howard. I'll be on his neck now. And you're going to be mm-hmm. very proud of me. If you listen to ILP last week, I'm going to repeat it here. You're going to be so proud of me, man. I can't wait to talk. I to can imagine it has something to do with it's time we, for a new game. We, we <laughs> going to talk. We going to talk. <laughs> but your thoughts on Elder Scrolls. Your yeah, on. no, I mean, I, I love Elder Scrolls. Like if there is a fantasy series I do like, naturally it is Elder Scrolls. I don't think it needs it just because, okay, the reason Fallout works as a TV show is it speaks, its themes are far more prevalent than I think what Elder Scrolls provides. Like Elder Scrolls is a grand adventure and you can make something out of that that is compelling. You could make a storyline about just the Dark Brotherhood, like someone's rise in the Dark Brotherhood, this really gory show. You could 100% do that. I would totally be for that. But I do think Fallout and its themes, its story uh, speak to, especially in current days, it hits particularly hard. It, It feels incredibly relevant. And I think it'll always feel relevant because its themes are rooted in humanity. So that's never going to change. And so I I think it makes sense why they would be more open to pursuing that. I also have to say Elder Scrolls is the the firstborn. It's the Mm -hmm. baby. And so Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, and myself included, think sometimes Bethesda is a little overprotective of Fallout, but truly they are protective of Elder Scrolls. No one outside the Bethesda family has ever touched that IP in a meaningful way. So I don't think they would do it unless they could pretty much do it entirely themselves. Things a little different with Fallout where they understand, you know, there's a business to it, right? They understand that this drives a ton of money and they also understand that it's a lot easier to do a good Fallout show than a good Elder Scrolls show. So I think it's good it's reserved because, hey, if we had to choose between a whack Elder Scrolls show and like another Port of Skyrim, I'll take another Port of Skyrim. Like just take the guaranteed money there. Take the guaranteed success there. Uh, But I know some people won't like that, but I just... I think it's good that for all Bethesda's flaws, just 
the intentions are right. It doesn't mean they always execute properly, but the intentions are right. And I think that's what matters more right now uh, than anything. So we move from that cog to our next bit of news here. Fallout is topping the paid charts for Xbox. Uh, Pure Xbox has the report here at the time of writing this, which was on, I'm trying to get an exact date here, but they only have the time of 1115 AM. Nonetheless, uh, they say looking at the ranks in the US, Fallout 4 Game of the Year edition was at number two in the top paid chart. Fallout New Vegas was number nine. Three was number 13. The standard version of Fallout 4 was 40 and 76 was at 50. It's a similar situation in various other regions right now, as well as the UK and Australia. So this is happening before Fallout 4 Next Gen Update hits, which we'll talk about in our news section. Uh, But this TV show has had, without any sort of new game at all, a dramatic impact on people buying Fallout again. And actually, what I've seen is a lot of people who aren't Fallout fans in, in, in my personal life, my best friend's brother, downloaded Fallout 4. He's like, tell Matt to get on those videos. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's never watched my stuff before. He's like, wow. he just knows I love Fallout. Uh, my brother is watching the show. Like just, People who would never have checked out Fallout before. Like Fallout was always in my personal life, like my circle associated with me. He's like, I'm the guy who loves it. Most people don't know what the hell I'm talking about half the time. Mm-hmm. And that's really it. But to see them now stepping in and be like, let's check this show out and getting the essence of it is cool. To see that leading to people playing the games is even better. And uh, I just want to note what's at the bottom of the list. All right. All what's right. At the bo- <laughs> there are 360 <laughs> games selling better than, uh, than a certain something. Oh, but, you try, you yeah. try, is, that, is that that 76 land? Is that, is that what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> it just dropped a massive new update too, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. But then it's doing well in, on Steam. In oh. fairness, I'm looking at Xbox most play, and they are in the top 25. Fallout 76 is in the top 25 most games Good for played. Them. I'm, I'm, I, I joke about 76. I do think it's come a long way. And if you haven't played it since launch, it's worth a look. It truly, in all seriousness, it is worth a look. I no. can't connect with it hardcore like the other ones. I think it's noteworthy to see that most people player count wise and and payment wise are going to the traditional experience, yeah, not yeah. the online component. Yes, yes. Uh, this is probably the biggest surge 76 is going to see for a while. So I hope Bethesda is taking note of like, all right, even with our biggest bump, like how far is that going to take them? Uh, but yeah, if you are listening to this and you haven't played 76, like you just saw the launch and you're like, I'm not touching that thing with Wastelanders. It has come a long way. Whereas someone like me who's lived through the launch, even the oh. beta and Oof. and all of those updates like it's hard to detach yourself from just some of the guts of the game that are so fucked up uh but i think if you haven't touched that or you 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 only played it a little bit at launch and haven't come back uh give it a look with wastelanders with steel rain with a lot of the quality of life enhancements they made uh it's it's pretty good it's pretty good it's definitely a respectable game at this point in time and i think the slander Except for me. <laughs> I, I have thoughts later. But in your defense also, um, even though I said like twenty at number twenty five is Fallout seventy six. At number twenty three is Fallout Four. So Fallout Four is being played ahead of Fallout seventy six as of right now yeah. on Xbox Play. But both of them to see them crack that top twenty five is huge. Yeah. Absolutely. So Fallout continuing to thrive in light of the successful tv show very happy to see that we move to our next story here cog yes i know some people will complain why is an xbox podcast talking about this but you've seen the top comment for the last few weeks defining duke a multi-platform podcast defining duke a pc podcast defining duke a, a non a platform agnostic podcast i see these comments it's like yeah you know what all right let's roll with it playstation blog They posted details on Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut PC version, and they revealed cross-play for the Legends mode. But not only that, they talked about a new overlay for the PlayStation experience on PC. And here's what they write. Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut is the first PlayStation title on PC that uses a new PlayStation overlay, which includes your friends list, trophies, settings, and your profile. This feature is available on Windows PCs and will be accessible from the in-game menu or for keyboard players by pressing Shift F1 shortcut on your keyboard. While playing the game, you can earn PlayStation trophies just like on PlayStation consoles. Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut on PC shares the same trophy set as the game on the PlayStation 5 consoles. In addition, the PC version also has full support of achievements on Steam and the Epic Game Store. 
To make use of features like trophies, friends lists, and crossplay, you can sign in with your existing account for PlayStation Network or create a new account. The use of the PlayStation overlay is optional for both the single player experience and the Legends mode. At the bottom, however, there's an asterisk saying users who connect their account, existing account, sorry, for PlayStation Network and unlock trophies on Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut using the same account on PS5 will have the same trophies unlocked on the PC version. So the integration gets stronger. The next step has been made. PC, uh, PlayStation is going all in on PC. And I am really happy to see this, by the way, because one of the things that kept me from playing PlayStation games on PC was like no trophy support. I love trophies. I still collect them. I don't do as much platinum hunting as I did, but this is really exciting. Like this is one of the next steps I was personally waiting for. And Cog, I know you mentioned a bit of people like civil warring online and a lot of yeah. uh, upsetment. Uh, I, I feel like this should be celebrated though. Like this is a really exciting step for PlayStation, for PC gamers, um, more people in that trophy ecosystem. Crossplay support, also really cool to see with that very underrated Legends mode. Legends mode. Way better Ooh. than it had every, any right to be. We have a write-in, then I'll kick it to you. Yes, yes. Astro Parrot King writes in, Hello, Mr. In today's video, and Mr. You're going to get pounded out. With the release of PlayStation trophies in Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut for PC with the PlayStation overlay, what impact do you think this has on the gaming industry or at least for Xbox players on PC? For me, I'm happy that I'll finally be able to get all the trophies for Ghost of Tsushima on PC. Have a, I was betching 285 and I told the wait, you're going to get pounded out <laughs> of a day. All right, that's let's hear it, Cog. There's the joke, and then there's the Ghost of Tsushima take, whichever one you want to kick off it, first. Man. That's one of my favorite franchises. You know what I'm saying? I am a... I am a Jin Sakai ninja. I'm a Cognito of that sort. <laughs> I did that Iki Island. I did all that. I haven't you done Iki Island, I have to say. Ooh, I, I, yeah, so I, I got to do it. Yeah. Bro, Legends Mode, amazing. Um, one of the most highly underrated um, you know, multiplayer games. Almost had like Destiny Raid-like mechanics. Mm. Phenomenal. Um, look, this is... I guess the, the surprise I had was just how much of an integration and in having a PlayStation UI similar to how an Xbox game bar would be where you have your friends list. And you said it best. One of my major detractions from PlayStation kind of dipping their toe in PC was one, the releases being later, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of missed the zeitgeist. We saw the Insomniac leaks and how, you know, a lot of the numbers were kind of soft of some of their bigger releases when they started to push them back as opposed to the initial release of a days gone when there was like the novelty of it. Once yeah. the novelty of PlayStation games went off on um, went away on PC because they separated, you know, they slowed the sales started to slow. Then we see Hell Helldivers 2, mm. which is a day and date, and we see this tremendous and it's maintaining. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know that's multiplayer game and it's different. But what what I think is we're seeing is what's my man, Hiroki Totoki. Yeah. Ever since the Jim Ryan transition, he's being extremely aggressive. What we're noticing right now is, yeah, PlayStation selling consoles, everyone's saying the model is great, but the margins are slim. And, and what these companies want to do is they want to make more revenue. They want to expand the things that everyone laughs at Phil Spencer for saying. These are what companies are mimicking. They're like, look, we've got to get a bigger piece of the pie outside of that console circle. And unfortunately for some, this is going to be like, all that fanboy wars, that's over. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is happening, y'all. Like, this is this is what these companies want to do. I don't know if people don't want to pay attention or they just, you, they resist it, they're kicking and scratching. Yeah, yeah. They want to put these games on PC. When you see the PlayStation UI and ecosystem the same way the Xbox UI with an Xbox game bar is there to put your friends list, to me, that's the future. Like, I am cool with my ROG ally being able to now play Ghost of Tsushima have my trophy list connect because that's another thing uh, i'm gonna be honest like as a person who's really not a fan of the playstation portal you know they don't have the dedicated handheld yet yeah now i can boot this bad boy up yeah. and i can do everything so the synergy is there you see cross play there between ps4 yeah. ps5 pc this is a big deal this is a big deal i'm dying i would love to hear how the sacred boys you know talk about it because i know you know um they, you know colin loves his trophies and stuff like that but i think it's a big deal because that you always want to stay connected to your ecosystem right mm -hmm. you always want to have credit for the work that was my main detraction from pc games on playstation i mean playstation games on pc excuse me mm -hmm. is that I'm, I'm doing this for free. 
right? right? I'm playing, you know, High Rise of Leo Dawn, but I'm going to beat it, but I ain't going to get the cre- I didn't like that. Yeah. I don't want just Steam credit. Nah, bro. Like, I've got an ecosystem over there, and that's what – now I can continue my joints on my ally. I'm lit. I like it. So I don't know how you feel about it, but it, I would say, yeah, the, the Twitter streets, I, I peeked in there. Dudes, I haven't peeked in yet, but. bro. It's bad out there. Dudes are going through it like, oh, my console's devalued. Oh, what am I gonna do? I'm like, bro, like, what is? How is that affecting your experience that you beat Ghost of Tsushima already? Yeah. You ran up the mountainside. You you chased the foxes. Yeah. <laughs> you had all the duels, <laughs> but you mad now that they, they, another group that you don't play on. Yeah. It's gonna benefit, and they're gonna make more money. The revenue, you don't you want Ghost of Tsushima too? Don't you yeah. want the movie? I heard they coming out with a movie. Don't you want the movie to come out? Like, I don't know. It, it, it's funny to me, but I laugh because all yeah. that when dudes is talking, all that fighting Duke a PC. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, you too. <laughs> Join. <up. laughs> welcome. That's where I'm at with it. <laughs> Just open it up with welcome our welcoming arms. So yeah, I, I I'm I'm very personally very excited for the reasons I mentioned earlier, just to see the walls go down a little bit. Uh, you know, it's also to me indicative of potentially if Helldivers 2 had such a strong impact or if this was a plan for a long while beforehand, the day and date PC and PlayStation launches, I would love to see that be a thing um consistently moving forward. Cause I look at, for example, like I don't know if this would be a great example, but it's something that just made me think of it. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We're in that interesting phase again where we saw very similar to 16's launch, like, oh, the sales are like a, a small fraction of what they were for remake and it may not be doing as well as we think it is. And, and so we'll see what the sales end up being if Square shoots that down or anything along those lines. But when I look at that, I go, I don't think massive budgeted because i mean you play rebirth and you just know based on how phenomenal the game is the high production high values quality. like that was not a cheap game again i don't know how they made that in four years it's so impressive oh, but yeah. they spent a lot to make that game right and if you want to get your money back that needs to be available on as many platforms as you can manage within that playstation contract and that's a game that i wonder if it was on pc how much more it would have done would it have had that you know a third or two thirds of the sales of of remake, you know, which it obviously I think needs more since it was probably a more de- expensive development cycle. Keep in mind, remake did release in the middle of a pan, right at the start of the pandemic. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sure that definitely influenced some sales for sure. But I-, I look at an example like that and think that Square, with their new, based on the handshake we saw with Xbox, uh, probably wants to get these games on as many platforms as they can manage. And I imagine other developers feel the same. And so mm-hmm. I think this is good. If we're pushing towards sustainability of what Phil says is truly the case, and we're seeing PlayStation start to kind of inch in that direction too, then it gives a little more credibility to those words. And it, if it means that we can you know, get the best possible games and continue certain practices being maintained that aren't uh, you know, bleeding our pockets dry, where we can just get a traditional single player game and have it launch on all systems. And because of that revenue that can be generated across all systems, instead of just like one single exclusive platform. And like, that could be a difference maker then great. Like let's, let's keep going in this direction. But just as a fan, you know, getting that trophy support in different places is crucial. You get, I got a little taste of that with like cloud gaming uh, through yeah. my PS five and just popping trophies on my couch in the other room. Like that type mm-hmm. of stuff is cool, but uh, to get this full integration, some people are about to learn for the first time. Like, I don't think anything hits quite like a PlayStation trophy. I love achievement hunting too, but like Steam achievement hunting, I got a buddy who went through Final Fantasy 7 and 6 and got all the achievements. He's like, yeah, I got all the Steam achievements. I'm like, you dork. Who cares, <laughs> who cares about that? <laughs> yeah, I ain't the biggest Steam achievement guy yeah. too. Yeah, it, it, it's that credit, right? And, you know, to your point, we're, we're starting to see with both consoles that blurring of the line, right? Where we're seeing this disintegration. And, and I don't know if you recently saw Xbox uh, talked about um, their Xbox cloud platform now being able to, to put party chat Mm. And and all those aspects into the cloud, just a browser, no console. Just, this mm. is where things are going. Now, yes, Xbox is a little bit more aggressive, of course, and then sure. PlayStation is getting there. And um, again, for right now, maybe PlayStation, the vibe I get from them is I get the sense that multiplayer is going to be day to date with that, right? Mm. I get Now, what I get the sense from Nixus, who put out this blog, is, well, maybe single player doesn't do day to date just yet, but mm. we're going to get our UI, our interface to the, the PlayStation Central experience 
on these PC games and unify. And I think, I'm going to be honest with you, that helps ease a resistant base a little bit better when you're on a PC and you have your entire trophy list, your entire, you know, gamer tag, your PlayStation ID with you wherever you go. That makes that interface much more seamless and more amenable. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, get, get, get ready. This, this is where things are going. Yeah. And I just think I always had this sense with PlayStation. It was kind of Xbox kind of trend sets it. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of dip because they do know their base is loyal. They do know there's going to be a transition for them. And out of respect, they're still selling their consoles, which they do well. Yeah. You know, they have to be careful. I always, in fairness to PlayStation, they have to be careful with just being aggressive, like how Microsoft is, because they are in a position of strength too. Yeah. But it's sure. going to happen based on, you know, they want more outside of that console bubble for sure. Another a good game to to lead in with that would also be Bloodborne Remaster. I mean, I know that would just sell consoles on its own, but like that having a PC version would be incredible, incredible. Yeah. So people, go, oh, the frames, oh, the resolution. <sighs> I was talking about it with a couple of friends last night. I was like, dude, just like, what are they doing? Like, how is that not this? How is that not a thing yet? Just like no one's even asking for a sequel, although that'd be sick. Just we just want a Bloodborne Remaster. That's facts. All. Facts. All right. Next on the news docket here. Midori, popular leaker for Sega, has claimed that Persona 1 and 2 are receiving remakes. Neo JD writes in, Maddie, have you heard the rumor that Persona 1 and 2 are getting updated versions? Have you played either of these before? If so, would you suggest them to fans of the series? Thanks and have a I never thought Fallout would make for a better show than Halo, but here we are kind of day. That's true. I think when you heard both those on, on paper, you had to imagine Halo had the better shot, right? But here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, so to answer your question quickly, Neo, I played Persona 1. I, I didn't beat either of these older Persona games. I haven't played two at all, but I played a little bit of Persona 1 on, I think it was my PlayStation Classic, because I love that little device, man. Um, and I I tried it on my PS Vita as well with the PSP version. I own it complete in box. I want to give it another chance. I will say its soundtrack still bops. Some really sick tracks in there for the PSP version, I should say. Um, it's very different from three and on, though. It's a first person, uh, very much like Etrian Odyssey, kind of yes. dungeon crawler, yep. procedurally generated environments. Uh, the the fights have like six party members on a grid and you're fighting demons on the other side of a grid. It's uh, isometric camera view almost in combat. It's really really different but Kai, you have you you have played this one haven't you yeah so let fill us in a little bit more shall you no you just nailed it i mean it was i remember again playstation one was one of my favorite playstation i'm weird like that i know the more successful ones too but playstation one just holds a special near and dear heart to me so i remember that was when i was in my j r p g back mm. and i was like Yo, what is this game with these school kids and they're fighting demons and it was isometric yeah. and i remember they i forgot homie's name it, was, it, was, it had a brother with a cap he's like only, only his black. name is mark oh, yeah, yeah only black npc that was my man <laughs> so, <laughs> so i was like cool but yo they would get it but it had dark themes yeah and that was what really impressed me about the things they were talking about in this game so yeah and I, that was a game i fully beat during your call but believe at the time Precisely generated isometric view. They would yell out persona every you know five minutes when they were doing their thing. But it's t- I have to give credit to thank God they did evolve into what Mr. Maddie plays has grown into, you know, what I'm assuming from three on is when, you know, we get what we get now is that super stylistic, almost jumping off a comic book page style animation. In ter- and then in terms of the persona system, I feel they really evolved it the correct way. But the foundation was was really traditional JRPG, but it, they definitely were doing different things subject wise, theme wise that really intrigued me at the time. Yeah, we actually have some more tweets here from Midori. So someone said, I'm praying she means remakes and not remasters. And she said, to be safe, I will call it updated form for right now. Okay. And then back in February, she said, and P12, not all will be like reload style. And an Atlas PS2 game will get a remastered version as well. And then someone asked about if Shin Megami Tensei is dead. She said, no. There is a Netflix game coming and a title connected to SMT5, which obviously, you know, is true. And then a remaster title. So, yeah, I mean, this this woman has been spot on about every Sega related leak, which is, again, why I lost my shit when I learned about was a jet set with guns like Oof. 
Boy, but uh. we'll, we'll see how that turns out. But nonetheless, um, it's looking like P1 2, P1 and 2 are going to get some sort of remaster, some sort of update. I would love for them to definitely, you know, give it the love it deserves, kind of a reload style. You don't have to completely reinvent the formula, but enough to kind of modernize the gameplay. I think that's the toughest thing for people. Uh, I've heard that Persona 2 story is actually pretty great. I don't know if Persona 1 story is great, but to what Cog said, I've heard the themes are really strong, really dark, uh, which is what Persona is always about. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. More Persona is never a problem with me. I really got my eyes on Metaphor Refantasia, which has a, a showcase. I think it's next week. Uh, so I can't wait to see that because that's from the Persona team. Yeah, so we'll yeah. see how that goes. A side, A side, salute. Oh, like I said, if they do a remaster, provided they, I mean, remake, if they mm -hmm. do it well, I'll have my eyes on because I, I get a, it's a game I played and I beat, but it was like almost what was it tw thirty years ago? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I, I remember that I remember that game like during the, the age of Tekken One coming out. Like it was it's that long ago. So, but yeah, I would love to revisit if they give it the treatment. All right. This was this in the one that we have to step softly around just because unfortunately we'll be cut a day short, but a kingdom come deliverance Two reveal is arriving on April 18th. So the day our show goes live for patrons over on patreon.com slash last stand media. So we're just missing this one, but we got to write in here from meatball saying greetings, Mr. Professor plays and Lord see me after class cognito kingdom come deliverance Two has been all but confirmed to be revealed on the 18th. I'm interested to hear if you've played the first game and if you have any expectations for a potential sequel. It's a seriously underrated RPG, and I encourage everyone to check it out. Have a started as a peasant, and now we hear kind of day. <laughs> Those are bars. Yeah. Meatball played that game. That's Love bars. That. Yeah, looks like, uh, you know, Warhorse has an announcement. You know, as of recording, you guys will see what I have saw already. <laughs> but uh, I did announce it, you know, on um, Twitter and stuff as far as what I said, but I can't announce what I have seen. So you will know at the time of recording, I played Kingdom Come Deliverance 1. And um, yeah, like um, phenomenal, phenomenal game. What I would say, Matt, you would like it because it's realistic Skyrim. Mm -hmm. It's Skyrim, but oh, we have to almost think like we got to eat, we got to drink, we got to sleep. What you do and the way people view you, you I think it's like even the way you carry yourself is affected by the world and um, there's like drunkenness and, 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 and you, just, you, to, you can learn to read in that game too. Yeah, like, oh you, bro, yeah. It, it's hilarious. And then one of the like the in jokes from the main character from Scarlet's his name's Henry. Um, he would like, if you don't eat, <laughs> I'm quite hungry. I'm, you, you have to say it became like it trended. I'm yeah. quite hungry right now, <laughs> so I'm I'm excited. You know, um, you know, if if that's the case, you know, if they're doing that, great. But um, we'll see what Warhorse has cooking. By again, by this recording, you'll know. But I I, I love that game. My only thing that they got to do, Maddie, mm. is for part. My only gripe with part one is the combat. I just want, the combat was like, they went for hyper-realism mm. and defending and parrying and it, it was just a little cumbersome for a person new. Yeah. If they can simplify that, I think they run everything else about the game. It's absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah, Warhorse, well, um, and then I, they they touched certain subject man. They didn't, they didn't, yeah, they they went there. They went there very, and even the DLCs are great. This was a game that um, I remember we covered them when they were in Kickstarter, and we were just blown away. It was, I think, it's probably one of IOP's first viral videos. Like, wow. we, okay. yeah, we put people onto this game. We were like, it was a PAX. We were like, I'm telling you guys, this is Skyrim re hardcore. Yeah, and they punched above their weight, so everybody's been waiting to see what they're gonna do next. So yeah, shout out the walls. We'll see. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing because I covered Kingdom Come Deliverance, the first one, a ton. Like, I actually, one of my most popular videos on Mr. Matty channel was a lock picking tutorial, uh, just because that was the worst lock picking mini game ever. Uh, I don't know how they managed to make it so complex, and and whose thumb has managed to work that way, where you keep it in one spot and rotate it the other way. Yeah, it's it's insane, but um. I, I personally feel like this is a game that I didn't know if they were going to do a sequel or what they were going to do, but it's been six years. It came out in February of, of 2018. It's been six years since the first Kingdom Come Deliverance game. Uh, and I, I loved it. I really did. Um, I had a little bit of problem with the combat too, but I immediately put in Star Wars mods later on and just, you know, got the lightsabers going. And that was, 
that was awesome. Uh, nice. But yeah, man, I I personally when it when it came to Kingdom Come Deliverance, like it's not. I don't know if people disagree. It's not to me like a super story driven game, though. Like I was just there for the world, the exploration, the danger. You mentioned a very hardcore nature. And that's true. It's got the best map in a video game oh, ever, yes. by the way. Oh, best map yes. in a video game ever. I absolutely Amazing. love it. Opening's a little slow, but once you get out in the open world there, like it, it's really rewarding stuff. Seeing those big battles ongoing. Like, yeah, there's a realism to the combat that I think after six years, if they were just working on it this whole time of refinement, uh, this this could be one of those moments. It, this could be a comment that he just like milk if it looks like ass, but it could <laughs> blow us away. We'll yeah, see. But we'll see. I am excited and I will be playing that game at launch. No doubt about it, because I love the first Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah, I will say um, for those interested, I believe right now I checked because I'm doing a, a refresher. Um, it's like six bucks for like the entire deluxe edition with every dlc i don't play any slot. of the dlc how is oh it? the dlc is amazing the adventures really? of hans kapan oh man it, they've got some great dlc wow how long all are, are all the dlc like is it mm-hmm. is it uh like all episodic stuff is it more expansive material expansive stuff but they, wow. there's like two ones that are light i think the romance one but the other two were expanding on the actual mm. world itself so yeah again like six eight bucks right now you get all of it all the dlc everything included for like eight dollars so i believe it's on the xbox or a game store or whatever and they were in, they, what's cool they were in game pass they got all the bags they, yeah. they were in game pass at one point they even managed to put this thing to switch i was like wow oh yeah how? that was pretty recent right yeah. yeah like this thing they they got the long tail of it like salute the warhorse they got their bag yeah, they got their back. 100%. Yeah. So looking forward to learning more. We'll talk about that next week when it's revealed. Next up here, a little bit of heartbreaking news. Jason Schreier reports Dead Space franchise is on hold now following the comments of Jeff Grubb. He says that the original plan was not for a Dead Space 2 remake, but instead a whole new entry in the franchise and also claims that the project was never green lit. So leakers correcting leakers. And now we have conflicting statements in EA saying none of that was true from Jeff Grubb. And so, yeah, here we are. Basically, Dead Space franchise is is standing pat once more. Uh, I'm happy we got the remake and it's so good and that it existed. It's just it's it's just it blows my fucking mind, man. It really does. Like, I guess what we're learning here maybe is that Resident Evil is like the only survival horror franchise that can sell really well. Mm. maybe that's what we're learning here i don't know Uh, i feel like dead space had the marketing it had the budget it had the quality it has the ideas from resident evil like it had everything uh so i don't know why it didn't do well enough to to get to that next entry but i am disappointed in you gamers i am disappointed yeah yeah i got that new entry all yours oh man ea gutted visceral all y'all do and we'll talk about this especially with fallout all you do is sit on your fucking phone on Twitter and bitch up a storm. Pull out your goddamn wallet and start spending some money on the industry you care so much about, apparently. Talk That's all me. I'm asking for, man. Mm-hmm. You want a new Dead Space? You hate EA for Visceral? What happened there? They got this great remake. They got a team that understands Dead Space maybe better than Visceral did by the point they were done with it, and you hung them out to dry. Mm. Be ashamed, gamers. Be ashamed. I'm not, I'm not going easy on you for this one because this is the... <laughs> One survival horror franchise I got a lot of love for. I mean, I love Resident Evil. Don't get me wrong. But Dead Space is is the king among kings. So no, you preach him. Very, preach. Uh, very upsetting news here. I would have loved the Dead Space re- 2 remake as well. But I mean, to get a new entry, um, I, I can't even imagine what it would have been. I really yeah. can't. But I, that was that's such an exciting idea that they even knew what they wanted to do there. So, uh, Cog, yeah. what do you make of this heart shattering news about Dead Space being on hold? <laughs> Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, I'm assuming, you know, obviously the sales figures did not do as well as they probably anticipated. Thus, yeah. you know, they're redirecting, you know, their their attention elsewhere to the other franchises. But, yeah, it's, I'm in the same boat as you, which is like when it's something that I hear people always complain and say, you know, you need to make this. They need to do this or the same way you feel about this is how I feel about when, you know, Xbox gamers complain about Japanese games or things missing the platform. And then when I see in the Rock of Blade point, when I see. Capcom's joint that's about to come out. Uh, what's my joint with the um, oh, uh, Kinetsugami? Yeah, Kinetsugami. like yeah. I want to see y'all outside. I don't be seeing. I know who I'll be outside. I know I'll be pit purchasing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know I know you support. So again, it's just a lot of the Twitter talking and, and dudes complaining. But when it's time, 
That's why that's why I always find it funny when dudes complain, but I never see no gameplay. I never see no clips of them doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that that to me tells me everything I need to know in reference to the echo, echo chamber of social media. So, yeah, this is unfortunate because, uh, again, I know how much people love this franchise and to see it not, you know, get the second one. And to your point, I know you would have liked to, co- to continue because yeah. your thing and what everyone tells me is part three. If they would have been able to get their hands on that and really remake that in with modern sensibilities, as opposed to what they did last hour, some people see something, something from their perspective and, mm-hmm. you know, somebody was explaining it to me, but people felt three needed the most work. Two was like yeah. almost perfect, but three was the one that we hope we got to. So yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, man. Hopefully they, they, they revisit at some point and, you know, hopefully there's a resurgence or something or, yeah. or a movie, maybe a movie could come out. <laughs> I, I guess. Yeah. Anything's possible. Yeah, it's, uh, that would right. definitely Anime be something. Or something. Either they get a quick bag or yeah, they resurrect the franchise through it. I don't know, man. It's hard. It's, know. it's genuinely the thing is, is now it, they did it and they saw how it went. They shut down a studio that was originally working on it, and you got your teams like bound up in all of these Marvel games and whatnot. It's, it's hard to imagine them ever doing it. It really I is. Know, know. So it, it, it kind of does to me at least symbol, signif- uh, symbolize for at least another decade, probably. Like we're not going to get Dead Space. Yeah, like that's sucks. it. That sucks. So enjoy it while it's here, folks. Amazing gameplay if you haven't. All right, next up on the list here. In speaking with PC Gamer, Hasbro reveals that they are planning a new Baldur's Gate game. Quote, we're going to take our time and find the right partner, the right approach, and the right product that could represent the future of Baldur's Gate. We take that very, very seriously. As we do with all our decisions around our portfolio, we don't rush into decisions as to who to partner with on products and what or what products we should be considering. End quote. Mike Poe writes, with the news that Hasbro is shopping around for a dev to work on Baldur's Gate 4 now, with uh, now that Larian is moving on, who is the best developer for the job and why is it Obsidian? Thank you, Mike, for writing in. So, Cog, what, what do you uh, what do you think about this? That after the immense success that Baldur's Gate 3 was, the the crown jewel in RPG developers and in, in Larian walks to go do their own thing. Like they're like, we did that. We're going to let that be that lightning in the bottom moment. We're going to go do this now. So they leave behind Baldur's Gate four. they leave behind Baldur's Gate DLC. The Hasbro is not ready to let go. Now, remember Baldur's Gate one and two were done by Bioware and all these years later, Larian picks it up mm. and Larian. There's that's like the only developer I could think of who could do it right. All those years later. What do you think about a Baldur's Gate 4 from anybody in this industry? Like it's it's tough to imagine. I, I think of maybe the Pathfinder crew, but the, the problem is is Larian had years of tech that was evolved that just culminated into this Bioware Divinity Original Sin hybrid that was just very easy to connect with. And so it probably made an extremely expensive game far cheaper than it would have been because a lot of the stuff was ready to go. So now Hasbro needs to find someone who, if they want to continue what Baldur's Gate looked like in three into four, they need to now get someone who has the tech ready to make it kind of look like that with those gameplay elements, build D&D into an engine. Like it's, it's such a tall order. And Larian was the only one basically with Divinity Original Sin 2 at the time doing D&D and video games. That's why I think the developers behind the Pathfinder series could be a pretty good selection. I just don't know. And they make great games, by the way. I, I did actually, in all transparency a sponsored video for one of the pathfinder games Mm but uh for for those who care Locke loves those games i actually put Mm -hmm. him on to those games to those videos and and he adores them and then like Locke is the isometric pc rpg Ah, guy Uh, so they would do a good one i think but i just don't know if it would necessarily be of the the quality conversation wise as, as unless there's a massive budget thrown in there um that Baldur's gate 3 presented it's a it's a tough hill to climb I'd love to see more Baldur's Gate, especially with the epilogue content. <laughs> Look, man, yeah. there was a lot of symbolizing. There was story left to be told with this crew. So we'll see what they end up doing. But uh, Cog, your thoughts on Hasbro continuing the fight for Baldur's Gate 4? It's so interesting, man. This is this is conflicting because the gamer in me is like, damn, we can't get that far from Larian. Mm. But the, you know, the person who respects the industry and understands that, you know, developers they don't want to sometimes be pigeonholed and locked mm. in to doing something that they are mentally checked out of. 
And we know that game is a labor of love. We know that game is so high quality. It had those classic Bioware sensibilities, but then they took it to the next level. You have the D&D aspect. I'm very nervous for any team who comes behind them. Like, let's just be honest. Like, that is a tall order. Yeah. So to me, it's a very specialized group that would have to have not only the passion for a franchise like this, but also like to your point, the technology to be able to now take it to the next level. Because one thing people don't, Baldur's Gate 3 is, is a looker, you know, with yeah, those yeah. those cinematics, you That's know, and look, you know, I'm, ooh, you know, I'm a Starfield guy, <laughs> but I got to be respectful now. When it came to who faces was doing what, oh man, when it it's even not even close. Yeah, like, like we got to, that's I love y'all, but they them boys over there, oh my God. they was cooking. It's amazing Mary. they went from that top down into video just into to that to like, that some of the so best good. animation in any conversation in video games, like just Facts. so good, so good. so good. And I'm sitting there, and even the voice acting, a uh, 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 voice ticks was in your ear. You don't know if you trust them, but yeah. like it's just the north where I'm like, this feels like that classic Bioware, baby. Yeah. That is nothing better than that. So again, when I saw that, I was like. Yeah, that 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 kind of feel like the game of the year, right? There. <laughs> I ain't going front, you know. So I had to do, could see that part. As much as I go hard for Starfield, I still ride on it. I knew at that point, I was like, ah, it's just, a, it's just, yeah. and it came out in a rough year with all of this. Yeah. They got Larry, and they got to deal with. But yeah, like, salute to Larry. And um, as far as obviously, everyone wants the Black Rock to do something. I know, but they they got a lot going on on their plate and i want them to do something else that we will get into later yes. i want their resources yeah, somewhere they're they're busy else. right now they're a bit I'm busy throwing obsidian to everything that's hey. not named fallout is what we're exactly <laughs> you know that we know where they need to be yeah. so yeah i look hasbro i get it cash cow you want to keep the train moving mm-hmm. it's going to be tough you have to really do your research cuz if you get Joe Blow Studio out here, and they miff <laughs> not, and you just try to get a cat, you're gonna get dragged. Oh, dude, they game- they they made a game called Dark Alliance, which as someone who loved the Dark Alliance games on PS2, I was actually really excited about. It was one of the first day one Game Pass games. Uh, we got Outriders, and then Dark Alliance was the second one from the third party catalog, and that game fucking sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. And so all I'm saying is they they mentioned here like, oh we. We carefully select our portfolio. No, you do not. That game, that game suggested the exact opposite. Now you lucked into Larian, man, because they wanted to do it. That was yeah, it. That's that the was thing. it. So Ashley. yeah, I, I'm not holding my breath. And, and yeah. Hasbro, you'll get into our good graces when you do the Transformer re-release. Yes, yes, love yes, you. Yes. Then we'll love you again. And we do her. You got the source code, so we don't want to hear no lip and yeah. get, get in contact with Jason Ronald and, and make it happen, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up here. EA Motive's Iron Man game, as well as EA's Black Panther game, are both open world according to job listings. So, uh, you know, in case you care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Iron Man makes sense. Black Panther being open world, do you think that's necessary? Call me crazy. Call me out here. I'm trying. No, no, I'm with you. I share the sentiments like, you know me. I'm always open world fatigue. Even they... God, Dogma was doing something different, right? Mm-hmm. That made me excited. But yeah. when I hear open world, sometimes I'm like, do we everything got to be open world? Everything. It's so much cheaper. It's so much easier. <laughs> like, I just, why don't you, you want to save the so, budget? Yeah. <laughs> don't you want to save money and make more? Like, oh, you have Marvel. How could we spend less and make more? Like, isn't that just the initial business sensibility? It's like, nah. Let's make this shit open world again. It's like, I, I'm all for Iron Man in open world. I think that makes sense. This dude gets around fast. You can almost make like a Superman game, basically. We'll actually talk about that in our next topic here. But Black Panther, like I thought immediately of, oh, you're going to make like a Guardians of the Galaxy style right, game. Right. Like really yeah. give it the respect and attention it deserves. Tell a great mm-hmm. story here. It's like, nope, nope. Yeah. Now, now, in world. defense, they do have a good team behind Black Panther, I believe. Is it um Homegirl? Is it our girl over there? Is it Hennig? I always get confused which one's working on which. No, 1943 is, is Skydance, oh, who we're talking about next. Black Panther it. game developer. Who's is, the developers on this one? So I don't that get is. Hold on here. They were also involved in like a really 
strange thing oh, with um, that one controversy the thing sweet with baby, the sweet baby thing. thing yeah so oh, that's cliffhanger them. games yeah that was that oh, one where they said like they're not hiring yeah. like i think white people yeah yeah, yeah. i remember yeah. they they went you around people. they yeah. were maddie around on the dev <laughs> yeah so I, I if anyone wanted me to write black panther i'm, oh, afar- I'm afraid to say come. i can't i'm not allowed <laughs> you can't come over <laughs> <laughs> can't even do the artwork nothing nope, nope. but i'm just joking <laughs> oh that was funny but look you know in fairness, yeah, I would I would love to explore Wakanda and all its its glory. We get that, but again, I'm pushing, I'm pulling for them. Hope they do a fantastic job. It's just me selfishly with any game outside of Black Panther. I just have a little bit of open world fatigue unless yeah. you introduce new mechanics. But we'll see. You know, yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, we will. But next up, Skydance Interactive. So this is the Amy Hedig Studio, right? We already knew they're working on a Star Wars game. We have Marvel 1943. And now they're making a AAA Invincible game with crowdfunding, which has now surpassed 450K. And I put this in our LSM staff chat because I saw the news and they're like, they started with a goal of 50K. I went, wait, like I took like a, mo- it was one of those things where normally I just gloss over it. And I went and scrolled back up. And I went 50K for AAA. Like, and I put it in the chat. I was like, can someone explain this to me? Like, what is the, what is the idea here? Like, how do you, do you get off the ground? Am I being stupid right now? And so Ben, who, who knows much more than me in this regard, because he's, working more on the game development side with funding and all that stuff before said is probably for marketing reasons just to kind of get it out there and they trust that it's going to get funded um since this is a comic ip i imagine at first i was like well why isn't amazon getting behind this but i imagine amazon doesn't own it it's robert kirkman's ip because he you know, he did all the comic for this to my knowledge and so i imagine he's licensing it out to skydance who are then going to go get it crowdfunded but i mean look i've i haven't watched season two but season one of invincible is so good one of the one of the most shocking episode ones I've seen too. Like it really, you think it's going one way and oh my God, it makes a left turn that is unbelievable. My dad, who doesn't really like cartoons or anything like that, I sat his ass down. I said, you got to check this shit out. Check out just the first episode. He wow. didn't get past the first episode, but still he was like, okay, that was pretty good, which is which is saying a lot. That's so yeah, right? like Invincible is a great show. I don't know much about season two, but season one was fantastic. I would love to see, by the way, it's like, for those who don't know, think of a superhero universe with, it's very gory though. Not the boys level gore, but it, it's got that violent nature to it. Really great art style, uh, really good characters too. It's got its own version, if you will, the Justice League. Like it's a an interesting, I, I feel like the boys is almost a commentary and, and a parody on Marvel, whereas Invincible is kind of DC in cartoon form. So like Amazon's got them both going on right now and it's, it's really great stuff. But uh, Skydance is, is mounting up all of the licensed projects now, which is something worth monitoring because I mean, we saw Marvel 1943. We don't know gameplay yeah. wise what it looks like, but visually, I mean, they're cooking. Oh, yeah. So no reason to doubt as at this moment in time, Akag, do you think they're taking a little too much on at this moment in time? Um, Not, not just yet. I think, you know, it remains to be seen. You know, it, it's one of those things that, I was surprised just like you to be like 50K, mm-hmm. like that's kind of low <laughs> to, 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 you know, to, to put that out there. So, you know, obviously we speak it internally and shout out to the, to the mayor, you know, he made some good points and in, in reference to, you know, they knew they probably would most likely blow past that number. So set a modest goal. You get a lot of um, eyes on it. Creative people like the idea of a successful kickstarter that's just raging and you're getting all this support so you feel like you have to kind of be at it so i think it's actually a solid approach as far as you know crowdfunding but as far as to your initial question you know um do i think am i worried about them you know time will tell we're gonna see if they're able to handle all these problems but i will say that black panther game that they had with captain america with that, that i believe that was ue5 yeah. looking like a straight movie now granted it wasn't gameplay but it gave us a sense of the feel, the time period, the zone, and mm-hmm. the dialogue and the story looked great. Now, again, is that where Amy is at? Yeah. She's over there. Okay, yeah, so Sky she's Dance over there. Is Amy, so she's yeah, in on Star yeah. Wars, Marvel, and now Invincible. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm less worried. Now, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of projects. It is. Yeah. It is a lot. But I would love to see where she's at at this stage of her career based on her legacy and the quality games that she made. And I'm always biased towards her. Again, she made favorite. This that was again PlayStation One is near and dear. These are so many unique titles. Blood Omen, Legacy of Kane. I die on that sword. That is one of the best games where the protagonist is a villain, straight vampire. Forget. I know a lot of people like the Legacy of Kane series for Raziel and all of that. Mm-hmm. 
my man is Kane. He is a mm. demon. He's a beast. And it was the first game that when you I played it, CD voice acting th- throughout the entire thing. As I woke up from my grave and I saw the stench, and I'm like, yo, yeah. what is this? Is what games blew my mind. I was like, what is PlayStation doing? This is crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, she, when I found out she was part of that, I'm all in on everything she's doing. <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. Yeah, I, 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 she it's weird she's in this bucket of like she has nothing to prove but then a lot to prove right because yes. after uncharted where she has nothing to prove right then it seems like there was reports of like infighting and like is she really who we thought she was as like right. a prolific director and so she's kind of stumbled around these projects we thought she was good i think she was on ragtag i want to say which I was the visceral so. star wars game i think Someone can correct me on that. I'm going off the top of the dome here. But I know she's kind of like Jade Raymond a bit, like in and out of projects, like prolific developer, but just nothing really sticking, right? Right. And so now we finally see her set up with Skydance and they look to be making some progress here. And so she has a wonderful legacy, but with that massive gap between Uncharted and now, it's like, okay, well, you still got it. And so we're going to see, but, uh, you know, her team's getting, they must have stuff to show off that's like either that or her legacy is that powerful usually like these companies green light stuff if if they know who you are or if you yes. have something you show them it's like we're capable of doing this yeah you kind of have the proof of concept so they might either are using Nar- marvel 1943 as this touchstone or i don't know what they're doing there to get all of this green lit but some wizardry going on over there it's a very interesting situation if you look at yes. it closely absolutely the final point i add is that she definitely has a lot to prove because that split up let's be honest you know it made Neil kind of shine Druckmann, who I got you know, honored to got a chance to meet in, in the flesh and having a conversation with him, a great guy. You know, since her departure, like he kind of took mm-hmm. off. So it's like, okay, well, who's the the the, the person here? You know, what I'm saying like who's the yeah. and that's where I I I feel she has a lot to prove. Okay, this is my baby from the scratch, and you know, now you, let's see what I can do. So yeah, I, I think there's a little chip on the shoulder there, if I had to guess. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, next up, Cog, Towerborn. Uh, it's still progressing along from Stoic Studio, developers of Banner Saga. They're opening up for more players to opt into the beta through the Xbox Insider program. And I believe this is happening in May. So, Cog, will you be checking this one out? Yes, this is the one I was uh, concerned because I was just like, damn, I thought this would be a top of the year, hold us over until Hellblade, Hellblade 2 situation. Yeah. And then we mysteriously stop hearing about it, right? So I'm like, damn, what was it out of the year? But it's back on. As you know, I'm the number one achievement hunter in Xbox Insider program. I challenge my score against all of you because you guys just talking. Yeah, I don't actually improve the platform. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I got the notification from the program exactly <laughs> that um, they, they're going to be doing it. So it's good to see. I will join in there. And those, those, are, the, those are the, I think, the Banner Saga peeps. So yeah, yep. I'm dying to see Stoic, man. Man, I love this Banner Saga. So that's my little dark horse, dark horse sleeper for the year. I, I want to see what Towerborn. I got to speak to Jess because I think he did play it at Gamescom or something. I think he was positive and, on it, if I remember. Yeah, he said he was positive. I, I'm very curious. I want to get my hands on to see how it is. So yeah, that's one of my little sleepers right there. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if I'm going to opt into the beta just because um, you know. So I'm. It's funny. I've I've beat a decent amount of games this year, but normally I have a lot more completed by this point. But because I'm playing like mostly just big jrpgs and i'm playing more of them now for reviews i'm like okay like it's just like i'm not going to beat a ton of games this year but all of them because all of them are like 80 hours long (laughs) like that's that's just what's happening here so like towerborn i'm like okay i think it looks great i love stoic studio i I honestly i need to play the rest of the banner saga trilogy like i only played the first one but i've heard that it's phenomenal like the way you can carry over your save and stuff Mm. Uh, i have i have a lot of nostalgia for the first one because i remember like the New York got hit by like a horrible storm. And so it was just like me and my switch. That was it. And so oh. like no power. I was like, all right, let's start playing this thing. Same, and, and so I was same. just grinding out big time. And yeah, it was it was awesome. Perfect game for the switch. But oh, uh, amazing on switch. Yeah. So I, I'm excited to see what they're cooking up next. They haven't made a whack game yet, as Cog would say. And so uh, we'll see what they're cooking up when release comes for me. But I'm excited to get your thoughts when you play the beta. Absolutely. Provided they let you talk about it. Yes. All right. Lawbreakers is returning kind of. A group of fans have created an unofficial launcher that's allowing the game to be played once again. So Cliffy B was actually promoting this too, which is how I found out about it. At first, you know what's I got I gotta be honest, I gotta call myself out. Like I saw the tweet hit by Tom. He's like, Lawbreakers is coming back. I was like, Christ, Cliff, come on, bro. What is going on? <laughs> what you doing, Cliff? And then I was like, I, I literally walked away, right? Like I was like, I'm just gonna fucking focus on something else here. And then I came back later. I was like, let me just do some honest research in this. And it 
turns out it's fans just bringing it back i was i thought he was bringing it back himself i was like oh no like dude come on we are sir. yeah like let the fans just console for gears like give him what he really wants he's he's oh, no. he's going back to lawbreakers which i never thought was a bad game i thought it was always a ton of fun especially the the, the attack on titan level class where you could just whip around and swing swords like uh that game was lit on the pack's floor i remember that clear as day but uh yeah that I never hated it much, but it never really took off. It's back. Cog, any thoughts on this? Man, I was sh- shocked that there's such a passionate base yeah. that wants to bring it back. And yeah, he gave his blessing. So salute to them. They're going to be doing their integration with the servers and stuff like that. And, you know, overall, look, I got love for Cliff. He, he's a big personality mm-hmm. for sure. But um, it's cool to see. I, I just I still feel he has one big story left to tell in gaming. I know he's got all his other entrepreneurial stuff going on. The man is huge in theater, by the way. Like, this Mm -hmm. guy's got things going on. Like, he does not need gaming. He's fine. He let us know on IOP. He is fine. But it, it does bother me that, like, what is it that Xbox won't consult with him? And to me... Again, I, I'm just speculation. I, I love Cliffy. This is no slander. This is the homie. Me and him really bonded a lot. Big hip hop guy, by the way. <laughs> but oh, yeah. um, oh yeah, yeah, we were spitting nice T bars in his intro. Nice. He, I could tell he he was smiling because like, he knew I did my research on him. Yeah. But to his point, like I, I wonder if the personality is too big in the room, or there's got to be. It almost feels like there is some bridge internally burnt that microsoft won't speak about because it doesn't make any sense not to at least consult with him right yeah. this is well, this is his baby so that that's unfortunate at least on a minor level have him oversee something or maybe with the show you know what i'm saying maybe you know that the rumors of that the gears of war they do it maybe a live action anna anime or something you got to get cliffy involved man i, I just hope the fences can be mended there especially do you now, think Mark. do you think yeah. it could be the opposite like coalition is Yo, we got it handled. We don't need him. We don't need this dude intruding. I think I think, I think it's I think it's part of it. I think it's part of the situation that, you know, once they've moved on and, and shout out to Coalition, you know, I got tremendous respect for them. You know what I mean? Like they've held it down since he's been gone. But we have to admit, too, and this is why I will die on this hill with Cliffy, like a little bit of the heart mm. of Gears has been missing. A, a, a little bit of that horror, a little bit of that you know, balls to the wall, you know, we're going to make a powerful decision Mm. and you're going to have to accept that Gears fans. And we all know Gears 5 about the ending, right? And that's a good point that he made on ILP and I agree with him. So I do feel if they made that choice, it would have been like the best campaign Gears has probably had. That's the funny part is it was just, it it just came to that. Yeah. You got to do it at some point. And I I know that's what it is. So it's, look, I'm biased towards Cliffy B. I'll never forget that when, was it Gears? Which one? I think Gears 2 is when Port Mode debut. They were making a sequel. They were adding, they were talking about all the new features and all. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, they're going all out. So I'm always going to have a special place for it. But I, I hope that relationship gets made. It, 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 it seems the guys on social media are like, hey, they don't contact me. Hey, guys, stop asking me. I, you know, you yeah. know how I feel. Yeah. Like, why can't this get fixed? It's weird. This is the industry we live in, bro. Like, yeah, when people don't like you, they just don't answer your emails and that's it. Like, there's just, just a one way street and there's no way to get into contact. I don't know. I mean, imagine if he's well connected. He's probably got personal contacts. But do you feel a little desperate if you text Phil and go, hey, let's talk gears. Call me. You know, like, bro, I've seen him do that like years ago. Like, hey, guys, I'm here. He, they'll make an announcement. This is he hasn't, he hasn't done it recently. And he doesn't do it all the time. But let's say. Once every two or three years, I've seen a tweet from Cliffy B say, hey, guys, I'm here when you ready. Mm-hmm. So what's going on? That's why part of me believes is like it's like how we talk about in the industry when, you know, certain companies may blacklist certain yeah. content. And we like, oh, oh, they can't get a review code. All right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it, it, it's saying. Yeah. yeah, that's what it, it feel like. Is a there's a soft blacklisted on my man, yeah. and it's unfortunate, you know. And again, in fairness, I don't know all the details. I ain't know if Cliffy went in there and started wilding either. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know the details, <laughs> but it's clear the relationship. There is some fracture on some point, and it's unfortunate. Get this man involved. Somebody feel somebody, please. I agree. All right. Mafia has a reveal possibly coming soon. We don't know really if it's Mafia 4 or not, but you could assume as much because Kurt Casus posted on their Twitter account. This is a video game leaker. I can tell you that a few days ago, Take-Two began preparations for an announcement regarding the Mafia series. 
It's hard for me to determine the time frame, but with Judas, I've seen them gearing up for the new trailer about three to four weeks before it drops so soon. FYI, I wrote, I specifically wrote an announcement regarding the Mafia series because I don't know if it is an announcement for Mafia 4, the next gen update for the Mafia trilogy, or something else. When I find out more, I'll let you know, which there has yet to be any updates whatsoever. So, Cog, we have, of course, take two in the news, not just for laying off 5% of its workforce and canceling several projects, but also that a Mafia game may be on the way. What do you make of this? You know, it's so interesting, the Mafia series, how it just keeps going. Like, I feel like with Hangar 13, I'm just like waiting for the shoe to drop. Yeah, I'm just it just feels like they haven't had like Mafia 3 did do well, but there's always some sort of internal strife or weird decision making involving this franchise. Right. And so Mafia 3 or I'm sorry, Mafia Definitive Edition, the first one, which was like a remake. I remember like the most common thing people have said about Mafia is please, when you make it open world, give us stuff to do in the open world that's not tied to the main story. And I feel three completely ignored that feedback, lied about it even. They were like, oh yeah, no, we got side stuff there. It's like, no, you really don't. And all the side stuff feeds right into the main story that lets you progress. So no, you don't have side stuff. And then Definitive Edition didn't really even add side stuff. So I'm curious if they finally listen to consumer feedback. but. Cog, any thoughts on the potential announcement for the Mafia franchise? I'm curious about critical acclaim. Like, how well did this series sell? Because obviously, we know what's going on with with Take Two and everything that's going on right now. So, I'm of I'm of I'm of the mindset that maybe look, I would love them to do a four, but maybe they gain garner interest by making a trilogy edition or some type of rematch and say, okay, are people still interested in this franchise? Do they still want? you know, us to go back to it. Cause for some reason, like, I, I don't know, maybe I, I don't have the data, but I, I feel like it didn't do well mm-hmm. or didn't do critically well. So I'm not sure there's, there's a part of me that's like, look, I'm not going to say no if they announce one, but in this climate, a lot of these, you know, triple A publishers, they want to take safe bets. And I'm not sure if mafia is safe right now. I know it's cult classic. People love it. Obviously, the last one, they went there. They touched some themes that I was very impressed with. I was like, oh, there you go in here with the racial thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They went there, and I was impressed the way they handled it for the most part. So, yeah, that, that's where I'm at. I, I'm just concerned that they may have trepidation on a new one. Mafia 3 sold 7 million units okay. by 2020. So it, okay. it does sell. I just okay. know that these games get like traded around studios a lot. And I think at some point I'm seeing here, Mafia 3 needed 8 million sales to be considered a success. That's what I was just about to say. The yeah, game right. sold 7, but what were their projections? Yeah. 2K said it's still a meaningful franchise in 2020. Mm-hmm. Which I don't, I don't know. But Mafia yeah. 3 was the fastest selling Mafia game. It sold 4.5 million of those copies in the first week of sale. Mm. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, Mafia 3, I, that's another game I actually covered a decent amount because remember. that had a tremendous level of hype behind it. And I loved Mafia 2. And so just everyone loved Mafia 2. It, it, between that and Fallout 4 was like these two sequels to things we never thought would ever happen. Um, and so, yeah, I just, ah, man, I, I, I want them to do another Mafia game because they, they do the social elements and the world elements so painfully well in these games. They really do, as you spoke to earlier. Um, so good. I just hope that they get the, the open world stuff just right finally yeah absolutely that's my hope all right so we have up next here blizzard being blizzard thanks to xbox we have a a full write-up here from video game chronicles courtesy of cog who sent it my way microsoft has let blizzard be blizzard following its acquisition of the studio last year that's according to holly longdale executive producer and vice president of world of warcraft who discussed what life at Microsoft has been like for the developer during a recent interview with VGC. Quote, if anything, it's just been helpful. We got time with Helen Chang from Mojang, and we were sharing information, so it's almost as if we have access to what worked for them. We got to speak to the Elder Scrolls Online team and share what we're up to and what's been working. It's almost like we get a benefit. There's no one asking us to do anything. World of Warcraft is doing very well, and they're very proud of what it's been able to accomplish. So it's almost just like, let it be, and let it keep being awesome. They've been tremendously supportive, and it's like, let Blizzard be Blizzard, end quote. What, what do you think of this, Cog? We got a, 
Blizzard's one of the companies people really want to have make a, a massive comeback, right? They seem to always be stepping on the rake, particularly, I think, with post-launch support of Diablo 4 being one example, another being Overwatch 2 just existing. With Bobby Kotick out of the picture, Xbox maybe in this instance, a hands-off approach being very beneficial to them, where sometimes we wish they were a little more hands-on, it would seem, like we talk about the Redfall situation. Mm -hmm. uh, do we think this is a time where them kind of just going like this and letting Blizzard do their thing benefit them in the long run? Yeah, this this one is bothering me in a in a weird way mm. because on one hand, I love hearing Blizzard say things like, in a sense, like, "Look, we are excited now." But when I hear like, "There's no one asking us to do anything," you know, let us be. When I hear those statements, it, I got to be honest with you, Maddie. It, last week, I, I kind of went on in on Duke on Bobby Kotick, right? And I was just like, yo, what was Bobby doing? It was mm -hmm. in, you know, and he still, he may not still be absolved, but I, I got to be honest, and this is going to hurt me to say this because I like this individual, but there's a part of me that's like, there's another person who just left being the head of Blizzard. Mm -hmm. And today you making statements at Blizzard like, oh, you know, things are great. We, you know, when I see, when I hear statements like this, and then I see the situation, remember that last week when we talked about, it, it's a huge deal with the, the uh, World of Warcraft, Chinese relationship, net ease. I just wonder, I, again, I don't want to go in, but I just like, I just wonder about the relationship with Mikey Barra. Because, because let's be honest, like we were surprised to see him let go. I'll, I'm going to be brutally honest, and the, the cops agree right now as well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I was like, man, you know, Microsoft Life, it makes sense. We saw the, the photo ops and stuff like that. But now there's a part of me, it's like, okay, now that he going, people happy that he, or now that he going, all of a sudden the, the deal is, the, the relationship with with uh, NetEase is, is, and WoW is, 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 again, maybe I'm reaching, I don't know. It, it, the timing seems very interesting to me. Right. Mm. That's all I will mm. say. And I know I gave Bobby a lot of smoke, but it, this is very curious to me that since other another individual left now, all of a sudden everything is is all good now and things are fixed <laughs> kind of thing. We'll see. I'm going to try to dig as much as I can. And again, I'm not trying to I got tremendous respect for Mike and Barra. I don't want to be completely disrespectful here, but it is kind of telling to me why these statements are coming out now. Yeah, I um, I get where you're coming from on that. I don't think you're wrong. To, to feel that way, especially just because, you know, the, t the timing is suspicious on it all. But um, this is something we talked about originally when um, Mikey Barr had a level of optimism when joining Xbox, just because he thought that they would let them kind of go back to what the Blizzard essence was. Um, and so now that we're seeing in a post Mikey Barr world, that is being the case and that they are happy with the initial integration. I think it's a good sign of things to come. Um, I again, I, I always like that Xbox is hands off, but I think it can bite them in the ass, as we saw in May of last year. It, it went completely south where they were just not attentive at all to right. Redfall. Um, and it showed that they need and as they've undergone a lot of restructuring of their teams, I think now they can maybe maintain and a good eye on these projects like it, it should have been in the first place. And so maybe they have that in place. And so they're checking in on what Blizzard's doing, but not really overruling. We'll see how things go in the meantime, though. You know, this Good hasn't point. been enough meaningful progress to me to Good be like, point. okay, yeah, they Blizzard's gonna cook now. Like it's you know, they it's been a couple of months, right? So it's still something that I think needs to be fully ironed out. But uh, that's fair. We'll see in due time, no less nonetheless. We have up next here, Sea of Thieves hits 40 million players across Xbox and PC. Cog, this is a, a tremendous success. What are your thoughts? Got to give King his flowers. He's he's been pumping the Sea of Thieves train for for years. You know, he's like millions of players. I remember even Attic and I kind of laughing, like, really, King back then. But yeah, this thing, you know, it. I remember. I will say this. I remember it. It's a very initial stages, and I must admit, it, as far as Microsoft games at an E3, this is when E3 still existed, and the Xbox One era Sea of Thieves debuted. I've never seen. This is when I wasn't media. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a line where it was like you literally had to start at the morning or you wasn't going to get a chance to play that game. You might not get to play it at like four until 4 or 5 p.m. It created that much buzz. And to be honest, I haven't probably seen an Xbox title since then. Mm -hmm. So as much as, you know, see if these 
gets its, you know, its jokes. And what was it? The Kraken was lacking at one point. That was a joke <laughs> at one point. And look, they've come a long way. Now, granted, it's a it's way more robust than when they initially launched. But we saw the foundation of this kind of out of control, funny pirate game where you can kind of do your own thing. And again, shout out to the man, Ben, who's hardcore on it, who goes, you know, plays and knows all the updates. 40 million is nothing to sniff at. And especially, you know, this is Xbox PC alone, right? We have not released the PS5 version, right? So this is super encouraging. And we already knew about the pre-orders. This one and Grounded is the one I'm really paying attention to in terms of the strategy. And if these continue success, I think Microsoft may look at their approach with live service games on day and date instead of just even, you know, just rip the bandaid off on those. You know what I mean? Kind of thing for as far as mo- other platforms, so to speak. Sure. This is money that you can't walk away from. And this game has tremendous resurgence. So PlayStation players want to play this game. Yeah. So I think this is this is this bodes well for them with these type of statistics coming into the pre you know, preamble before the PS5 and maybe a, yep. a Switch 2 launch, right? Yep. So Sea of Thieves continues to thrive. Ben throwing down a tankard in celebration. Yes. And with that, we move on to one of our final stories before we talk about what games we are playing here. Star Wars Outlaws. Bit of controversy with this one here as versions are going up to $130. We also have some DLC issues here. Day one DLC issues. Daniel J has the thorough write in. Greetings, Sir Cog and Sir Matty. Have you guys heard about the latest revelation about Star Wars Outlaws and its controversial part of me season pass? Ubisoft has now revealed that a day one DLC mission will be part of the season pass called Java's Gambit only accessible to players who spend the extra 40 to $60 on their gold and ultimate editions. The DLC will probably be very minimal to the overall game, but the fact that there's day one DLC at all is gross in my opinion. It really disappoints me to see a game I was initially pretty excited for fall down the typical Ubisoft nickel and dime route. I think myself and many others will just wait till the season pass is done and the complete package will inevitably be $70 on sale. I'm curious if this changes your guys' excitement or support for the game. Keep up the great work, gents, and have a Ubisoft going to Ubisoft kind of day. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll admit it. This has not impacted my hype at all. I'm still picking the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> I, usually, I get it. I totally uh-huh. respect where Daniel's coming uh-huh. from. Totally respect it. I think it's fair. It's understandable. Stand on your square. Be stronger than me. For me, this game looks awesome. It looks like what I've wanted for a while. And I'll be damned if one mission is going to stop me from getting involved with this game. I'm sorry. I'm going to be selfish here. I (laughs) want to play Star Wars Outlaws. I don't want to wait for the game I've been asking for for a long while, which is an open world Star Wars game. (laughs) I will be there. I don't think I'll be doing the gold edition, but I've been. Look. I'm sure it's not go. the only one, but I was there. Let's tell a story. I was right, there day one, Mass Effect 3. There's okay. Maddie, and what was this, 2012? So I was junior high school. I walk in. This woman at GameStop, she just had her sights set on me, right? This cashier. This, 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 uh, she, she just knew I was an easy target, right? So I go mm-hmm. in there. I'm like, yeah, I'm here to pick up Mass Effect 3. And she's like, oh, you know about the day one DLC? It's just $10. No, I think I'm okay. You know, I'm a high school student. I was like, I don't, I don't got that bread. Come on, I just mm-hmm. need the game. Like, I got barely got, I could barely afford this. Mm-hmm. She just starts kind of getting a little flirtatious, kind of starts Ooh. working me a little bit. She's like, come on, please. Like, it'll help me out. Just that type of energy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. She put it up there. Yeah, that type of energy, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not exaggerating. Like, please, wow. it'll really help me out. I was like, okay, fine. Like, you know, I'm in my head, I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I easily swindled, right? Weak knees. <laughs> If I was there in my past self, I would have smacked the shit out of me, bro. I was like, dude, she's not giving you shit, man. What do you think is going to happen? But anyway, I bought that DLC. I've been there. I threw 10 bucks down. And I know that's nothing compared to the 40 to 60 Ubisoft's asking for. But mm-hmm. you know what? I could live without that day one DLC. I still would have loved Mass Effect 3 at the end of the day. It was mm-hmm. minimal impact. Just like this yeah. will be minimal impact in, mm-hmm. a, in a, a drop in the bucket, if you will. So... Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone's wrong for standing by their morals, standing by how they feel about this approach here. It's not a great business practice. We should push back against it. I agree. I just won't be. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you keep it up. You keep it up. I'm just trying to be that. honest. Look, I think no, everyone's right. Honest. You're doing the right thing here. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I would go as extreme as like, I'm going to wait for the season pass to be done. Um, But, you know, Ubisoft doesn't seem to be moving things. I watched their response. It was just a, you know, a restating of what the package comes with. Yeah, right? that yeah. statement was whack. Yeah, they were just, like, I saw the headline. I was like, Ubisoft responds to the criticism. And I'm looking at like, they just said what they're selling again. Like they're they're not yep. changing anything. They got that Star Wars money incoming. Uh, they're they're not going to move off this one. So boycott if you will. Wait for a sale if you will. Uh, nothing is changing with that content there. So I will be there day one. But you don't have to be. I totally <laughs> You are you are probably stronger than I in this regard. Uh, so, mm-hmm. what do you make of of this mess from Ubisoft? Look, it, it, let's be clear. Like the practice is bad. Like yeah. I, I want to be clear. Like I don't like the idea of 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 a mission. See, this is why I don't like it with them. Is because they knew I'm a Star Wars casual, but I know about some Jabba the Hutt. Mm-hmm. Right. So you would throw a job. That was one of the things in the trailer that interested me the most. I was like, oh, OK, they going there in that time period. Job. The, OK. So then their statement is like, yeah, but you will. Job of the Hutt has a great faction. You won't miss out on anything job of the Hutt. Yeah, but we're going to miss out mm-hmm. on that mission. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so don't, you know, it was a lot of world mental gymnastics going on with that. You know, look, I don't like this president of it. So I want to be honest. But I also have to be honest with what you said. When it's something. Gamers, we know when it's something we love, it's going to be a few things that's going to hold us back, right? Mm -hmm. And I get it. Personal decision. The practice I don't like, but I'm not going to sit here and scold someone that says, yo, bro, I'm getting it. This is a game I've always wanted. You know, I've been having my eye on this, and this is not going to deter me from you. You ain't going to stop my dream game and and making me not get it and making me guilty. I get that. You know what I'm saying? It's a personal decision. All I will say is that I am nervous with other companies now getting into this yeah, bag of yeah. we going to give we going to take away like yo here's the new fallout joint but yo the um the brotherhood of steel mission you ain't going to get that 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 story that that quest there's a quest with the brother you get the power armor in the day way not don't come on now <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, like let's let's relax that that's we got to so that's the only thing we we have to push back on a little bit but yeah, as as Daniel J said Ubisoft go oh, Ubisoft sometimes yeah, so absolutely this is this is a surprise i didn't see this one coming all right, last bit of news here. We'll talk about what games we're playing. Hollow Knight Silk Song. The uh, the tracking continues as it has now been raided in Australia. There was a Nintendo Indie World today as we record. People thought it might be shown off then. It was not. Sean Sanderud writes in, Hey Dukes, Hollow Knight Silk Song has been raided in Australia, so surely a release can't be far away. Maybe a shadow drop at the Xbox Showcase in June? What are your thoughts? Thank you, Sean, for writing in. So yeah, this one's highly anticipated, man. Like this is going to be a big one. This is going to be one of the biggest yeah. games on Game Pass, no doubt about it. Like there is an extreme amount of excitement for Hollow Knight Silk Song. I wonder, do you think they shadow drop this after all this time? I don't think they shadow drop. I mm-hmm. don't. I don't think. I think that would be unwise. I, I think agree. like a close announcement to release, but I don't think you shadow drop. What do you think? Yeah, after High Fire Rush's uh, sales numbers. <laughs> yeah, I don't think shadow dropping is the way to go anymore. And, 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 and unless it's, you know, something you already kind of know about. It's a different type of shadow drop when, you, when you've promoted and you know about something. But even with this one, this is such a highly anticipated game. I would prefer it come out during the Xbox showcase and you just say, hey, it's here. This is the date. Game Pass. This is one of our biggest Game Pass gets. So that, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. Yeah, I... um. Um, I've not played the first Hollow Knight before, so I don't understand much of the excitement. I just see it's happening and it makes me want to try out the first Hollow Knight if I can get some time in. It's also like I, I personally don't want them to shadow drop it because I, if I see, oh, it's coming out in like August. Cool. Like I'm going to play Hollow Knight one before then and see what it's all about uh, to, to get into Silk Song. Um, but I, I get this sneaking suspicion because it's been they've been quiet for a while now it's getting rated. They're probably just making sure everything's done and good to go. So then when they show it off, they can give you the official date and let you know when it's coming. And that's not going to change because they've kind of kept things in the dark for a long while. So I think they've just internally decided, hey, when we speak next, like, let's just make sure everything is 100 percent. So I think that's what's ultimately happening here. And we'll see when the time comes. But Cog, that is the news for now. Yeah. It's time to talk about what games we're playing, what shows we are watching, sir. As always, you are up first. Yeah, so I know we're going to get into this is a whole Fallout show, but I have to admit, you know, after pl- watching that series on Amazon, completing the whole thing, 
edge of my seat. So much hype, bro. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I, I, I got to play something. I, I got to get to the wastes. Mm. I got to do something. So what am I going to do? So I'm sitting there. The, the, the answer was Fallout 4 at first. Like, bro, you got to go Fallout 4. Got to get that done. But then part of me was like, bro, the, de- the update doesn't come out to the 25th. So if you're going to replay that, mm. eh, you know what I'm saying? Wait, might as well wait for that 60 with all, this, you know, all this, the, the trimmings. And there was this one game that I've been slandering. <laughs> It's one game that I was mad at its, its existence. Oh, I'm just seeing it now. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I didn't check. Yeah. Oh. I was wondering when you was going to come. And I'm like, God, you know, like, what happened when you saw this game? You, you, you remember the dragging. Hmm. But, God, you never gave it a fair shot since launch. You never fired it up to see. What has happened since? Mm. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Four is not ready yet with that 60 frames on the 25th. Let's fire up Fallout 76 and see what's going on in these streets. (laughs) So brand new player. Now, what I remember, the game had looked terrible. Mm -hmm. Frame rate was horrible. Combat trash. No NPCs. No, it, it, I remember all the talk and the initial launch of Fallout 76 mm-hmm. and the memes. Boy, they were dragging God. That was God Howard's lowest moment. I'll never forget. So much so that he apologized on stage the following oh, year. following year. Yeah. Like this is, this, we have to admit, Fallout 76 did such a damaging scar to Bethesda. They, they It took a while. They, like they, they really, for the first time, they had the scarlet letter. You're like, damn, what happened, right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I bought this game up. I'm like, let's see what to expect. Maddie, um, why is this engine super smooth in third person and first person viewers? You know, I get out, you get out the vault. Obviously, there's no clear, strong narrative like a classic fallout game obviously the, the overseer is gone you want to find out what's going on you jump out the vault um the thing i will say off the bat is that appalachia looks fantastic yeah the, the, it's a great world inside yeah. it looks beautiful you know obviously vats is different you hold your left bumper now and it's kind of real time vats as opposed to the traditional because it's over you can't pause the game so to speak yeah. but you know there are npcs there are now full functioning story and main quest you know on um, their side quests and i will say the perk system they had um obviously still got special but now it's like cards yeah and then you i noticed i was able to combine certain cards to it's a good okay, system this, yeah it, i was like this is this yeah. is it's, a good, it's a good part. It, that's been there since the beginning. And that's and they even added like legendary perks on top of it. That's always been a really good part of the game. Sorry, continue. Bro, for free ninety nine, all the stuff they're giving me, they got the Vault thirty three suit and, <laughs> and all the stuff. And I'm uh, yeah. oh, I, I want to put that on. Yeah. You know, what I said I, I saw the, uh, the 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 ghoul suit and all that other stuff. It all free. They let you try Fallout first, I think, for a limited time. But I didn't do that. I didn't go that far yet because that's like okay, you want the dedicated server with just you and like seven or eight of your friends. Stuff like that but i will say this for a person who knew nothing the fallout 76 community shout out to my man anchor van v and all the people they woke up to hey man what do you need how can i help you this that i'm like yo this community is the greatest like yeah. it reminds me as a yeah. destiny player how i feel when i onboard destiny players and i, I think that their community is kind of better than the onboarding in the game mm-hmm. <laughs> i will say that mm-hmm. so i will say the only thing that was weird though Correct me if I'm wrong. I felt like food and water and the survival aspects wasn't really my meters wasn't they going down. Strip that all out. That was one of the worst parts of the game because okay. you were just always like it would sometimes progress while you were offline and like you'd be walking around to like one place and you'd be hungry or thirsty or tired. And so my problem originally with 76 was like, dude, I can't just play the game. Like every time I sign in, like it's just about gathering. But see, I mean, guess it was perfect for a live service game because every day you were just gathering materials to survive. And you'd fill up that bar, maybe go to like one or two locations and empty out again. It was bad. So, yeah, they pretty much made it where you get bonuses from being hydrated or full, well fed, well rested, all that. But uh, it's not like a, if you're on empty, it just doesn't matter. 
Yeah, like yeah, I didn't even get Wastelanders, if I remember correctly, which I was like, hallelujah. Yeah, That's I was true. playing a bunch of quests. I'm like, this meter is not going. I'm so used to grounded. I'm like, all right, when is it going to, you know, and then the food's going to get stale and all. Yeah. And I, I, I knew what I was in for. But look, is it perfect? Is there still some graphical issues here and there? Absolutely. Is there? Um, but it looks good. And, and I will say, the, the, listen, if you're a dedicated Fallout guy like yourself, I can understand that that will feel like a half measure. But for remember, I am Mr. Live Service. For a God who has the itch, who this world now, I'm so excited to play in, I could grab six of the homies and, they, bro, they bro, they can't wait for me. They were like, oh, we got a whole thing. For, we're going to do some expeditions in Atlantic City. They, they were so happy to see me boot up. And they were like, you what is going like on? the expeditions because they're basically like raids. But Oh, see, I like raids. Yeah, they're not as good i'm gonna imagine his destiny Clear. rates from what i've heard which are like some of the best things you can have in gaming but you know they mm -hmm. they're shooting galleries and you get a lot of loot and xp and all that stuff it's yeah like for someone like you i could see you you liking that yeah for sure so look i will say this is gonna hold me over until four i want to see four in all its glory and i have to admit i was pleasantly surprised yeah how much damn and i oh, listen i gotta Duke, Rumble the Duke, I owe y'all apology. There's a contingent of y'all who at every time I would drag 76, y'all would be on me like, yo, Carl, I'm saying this, this is a, you're coming at us. There's a lot of us still out here. And I will say this, bro, did you see this play account? Yeah, I saw it on Steam. I'm dead people. I'm just saying there is a, a, a surge there. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what they do because we clearly know what we still want i'm still going to stand on my square and what i want mm -hmm. but i have to give the 76 community this it is not i've not played since launch and they have really come a long way it is not as bad as i thought of. it was actually fun and i had a decent it's, time yeah it's it's absolutely the definition of many people who talk online but don't play the games and so, like people acting like 76 is still where it was in 2018 like i get it very much I'm irredeemable, very much trash, but it has come a long way. And even if I'm not in love with what it is, it's not the same abomination as before. Like it's much more stable <laughs> for starters, uh, you know, with the inclusion of NPCs. And by the way, with Wastelanders in 2020, the reason there was so much excitement is they reworked the main story. So yes. when they rework the main story, they added NPCs. So it's not just like chasing ghosts, but like these locations that were once empty now have people there that you yeah. talk to and learn yes. more about the world and interact in the quest. Like it, it, it is a dramatic improvement. The problem I have with it, not to short change. Short no, no, please, you, please, please. I want to hear you. But my problem is that Wastelanders, like if they gave us another Wastelanders, there would be no one on this fucking planet louder than me about how great that would be. But the mm. problem is that from Wastelanders, it was like, going down it was like this uh, steady decline so of like wait. how much they wanted to give you because 76 if they charge you i think they could get away with it now but i think they're scared to charge people money because yes. if they do what are you doing bethesda Charging it seems like money? they're flirting with a subscription service in a yeah. way right yeah oh they got subscription service they got battle pass they got the cosmetic shop dude don't you worry that game is is milking the people who are there every single penny out of their pocket no yeah. doubt about it but they have not delivered in my opinion beyond what wastelanders did and if they did that at least like once in a while i'd be for it i thought america's playground would kind of be that with a new open world explorable area but you'll, you'll see as you if you spend more time with it they take like the expedition zones and just repurpose them but no side location exploration like it's very very underwhelming so my question is, how do you like every time I, I've been following it, right? It's like, oh, we're coming out with the Atlantic City DLC. We're, like, I thought you're West Virginia. Like, how do you get to those other expansions and stuff? Uh, so there's a quest line attached to that. I don't know if there's there shouldn't be a level cap because one of the things they added that was also really good was this uh, Elder Scrolls. Oh, I'm level on. 25 from the beginning. Like, oh, they let OK, me, so they, you stopped. Oh, nice. Nice. They, as soon as you start, they say recommended 25. They gave me all these builds to pick from. Yeah. I picked the Vats one yeah. and then I was able to do my perks and all that other stuff yeah. so yeah they that's good they, they advanced the new player experience it seems yeah absolutely yeah. And, and on top of that they also with the um with the setup and everything uh they made it where i'm trying to remember where i was going with this because I, I was thinking about the new player experience i apologize but uh oh oh with the with the updates and everything um they kept giving you this diminishing return and with with wastelanders they brought in one 
what I would call one Tamriel because Elder Scrolls Online introduced it first, which was you could be level 100 and I could be level 20 and it would level our rock experience. Together. Yeah. yeah. So it made the, the the combined, like it made the starting experience good, but it made the cooperative experience great as well. Um, and so that was another great improvement they made. So they made a lot of phenomenal quality life improvements. But again, my problem is just the, the content, like Wastelanders is like a 15 hour story. It's got mm. choice and consequence, multiple endings. Oh, wow. It's got oh, new wow. game. It's got end game content attached to it. Like it's really great. Um, wow. It really is. Like I, I people can go watch my coverage on it when it came free? out. I was fucking gassing it up. I thought it was free awesome. Or free. Yeah, and there was there has not been to seventy six is credit for all the monetization it has. There has not been one thing that has been new that they have charged for. And you would hope so with that monetization in there, but you do not pay for anything new added to that game. Wow. And I don't know if that's out of again. My theory is fear. I think they're scared if they charge money for that, but I say go for it, man. Like my problem with 76, it is not over delivered yet. It is not done this moment where I'm like, oh my God, they did that. It's always like, man, you were just like a half step away. You were almost there. You almost got me. Like with the with the Atlantic City expeditions, I'm like, you almost got me, but you're just not there. Like you're not over delivering. You're not nailing the core mechanics that make this series special. So uh, I'm talking more than you. This is your no, way no, of playing I, I'm educating. No, no, this is great. This is great. Now, thank you for that. Like I said, as a, again, as a completely new player, I just thought, you know what, this is really has come a long way, and I had a good time. So yeah. I'll let you know how my experience goes with the because I wanted to play solo for a person who never played it before. How this game? So the onboarding still needed a little work, but I did have a lot of fun in yeah. the experience. Yeah, no, dude, good. solo. That's the thing. The open world is great. I Every time I think of 76, there is like, oh, it's kind of got a touch of the magic. It's not all the way there, but it's kind of got a touch of it. When you step into that world, you're like, oh yeah, like I'm ready to go in and, and yeah, dive into this thing. It, if you haven't been there in a while, I will just, I will just one up Cog's comment that it, it may be worth a try. Solo, yeah. especially it's totally fine. Like I play that Absolutely. game by myself all the time. I don't, I don't like to play 76 with people. I don't like, I like to play fallout at my own pace. Like don't interrupt me. Don't get in my way. So I, I play it by myself all the time. So if anyone's yes. looking for more solo, like you, you can yeah. get that here for Yeah, sure. you could definitely do it for it sure. It has the feel. Yeah, and last but not least, obviously the t- the typical Cog Nito playthrough, which is me, <laughs> Destiny Two into the light, and uh, oh, so oh, we got a question, we got some for a question, or oh, maybe a statement. Go. Oh, let's go, let's go. Diago Padreo writes in, "Hello, fellow Dukes. In a week where all the talk will surround the Fallout show and Fallout games, I humbly come to ask Maddie for help. We need an intervention for Cog. Destiny is not back, and it is not when Bungie is back against the wall that they deliver." Bungie is the boyfriend that gets blackout drunk every time he goes out with his girl. And when she is about to dump him because of it, he goes out two nights with her and doesn't drink. He just to extend the relationship with the couple knowing full well he will get blackout drunk again. Yes, we know he hits that thing the best. However, it is still a toxic relationship. Please, Maddie, help us save Cog in a time of need. Hashtag no more bad relationships. Sir, your thoughts on this? You will never stop me from going to the tower. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much you, uh, Diago, you don't hold me first of all, I love you. Um, really good dude, really good dude. But no matter how many Destiny haters try to stop my love for my beloved, mm. it's in a good place right now. It's in a better place right now. And I am having a time of my life. I cannot stop talking about it. And like I told you before, like I said, with Gears, I am a sucker for a good horde mode you get me in a little bit of tower defense four or five people three or four, four and you're setting up turrets and i'm setting up um barbed wire with electrical barriers up uh, it is fun bro there's nothing more exhilarating than a, a level one through 50 run where the defense is increased bro they throw the kitchen sink at you sometimes they put tormentors you've got this little adu device that you got to protect and you got to heal it and then you even have these little standalone dummies mm-hmm. that you can make and draw aggro toward the enemies towards it. It's really cool. Is it the most complex? No, but the classic weapons have returned. Banned weapons from Destiny. Mountaintop came back this week. The raids are back. Like, it's just in a good place. And the excitement is big. And uh, you know what? Another thing, too, Maddie? They've doubled their player count. Guess what? Wow. And guess what? Let's see where they. So Destiny, Diago would define this as the the girlfriend explaining to her friend group how the toxic boyfriend is actually changing, right? Is this? I mean, it seems he that, dropped the booze now. Come on, <laughs> listen. I'm looking right now. Guess what's number ten 
on Xbox most played. Top 10 mm. Destiny 2, baby. Uh-oh. So, so y'all can hate all y'all want, but Uh-oh. the people have decided. See, we unlike y'all, we don't we come back to our book. We like we like it. We understand the relationship can get a little hectic sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're forgiving, we, man. I see. We listen, we, there's nothing that gives me that feeling with shooting, skybox, music, cooperative experience, and raids. And when it's hitting right, look, we they still got a nail final shape, but Having a ball, man. So that's that's pretty much what it's been for me. And of course, I ain't gonna talk about Tekken. They're gonna get mad. I'm talking about Tekken still. So that was also going on as well. But um, it's really been about Fallout, to be honest. It's just really I, I've got the bug. I've got the fever. We'll talk about more later. But uh, what say you, sir? What say you? What you been playing? Yeah, my section will actually be really quick because two of the games are kind of like just dabbling right now. Dragon's Dogma Two just really taking my time with it. I've maxed out my Warrior vocation. I am moving on to Archer right now. Uh, that's been fun. I just love how every vocation is like a different play style. So I'm, yes. I'm loving this game. Uh, we're in Batal now. I've been exploring that mm, a lot, bro. I played for like six hours straight the other night. Like wow. I just had a whole power session where I just mm. really got into it, bro. Every step of the way, like a massive boss. I had a double boss fight against two ogres. Like this game, it, it is the most narrative rich anti narrative game. Like there's just yes. stories upon stories I can tell every time I play it, but it's never from the characters. It's, I love this game, man. So that's yes, you know what I was is. thinking of is um, I, I really started to just kind of chip through it session by session. It's making it so much fun every time I go back in because I just get lost in this world. I'm playing it very differently from any open world game I play. Just like I'm not chasing content. I'm wandering. I'm just finding bosses to fight. I'm stumbling into the content like it's a really special playthrough. So I've been kind of just chipping through that a little bit. Mega Man Zero I haven't played since last week, but uh, I'm still keeping that afloat. That's kind of like my. Uh, my bumper game, like when I want to just pop out for like an hour and just play something different and then pop back in. That's what I'm going to. Uh, I'm playing two games under embargo. I'll talk about Ooh. one of them next week, uh, but I can't talk about the other until another date. So I apologize for that. And uh, those won't be full reviews just because they're two big ass games at the same time. So I Ooh. I am only so human. Um, mm-hmm. And then Fallout fallout of course like just of course dipping into fallout 2 just enjoying some of the humor in that game yeah just really loving a lot of the uh the classic experience because the the show just spoke to the classics a ton playing new vegas a lot of course because i just you know ah, fuck i can't talk about it but damn man like it just it gave me the bug for all these fallout games uh fallout 4 i'm always playing i always have a fallout 4 playthrough active like i don't think people understand that like i'm always because my content i'm always playing fallout 4 so to me playing more fallout is is i'm always in a fallout mood always like i just randomly get that feeling but this show exploded to a whole other level and our our number one news story we'll talk about that extensively but yeah that's the kind of long and short of what i've been playing nothing to extensively dive into just a lot of i basically went to a restaurant and got a lot of appetizers this past week that's what's happened here yeah man it's that time man fallout is fallout's in the air baby i just uh i love seeing people happy with it right i I don't feel that way about any franchise like that's something you feel when you've worked on something right but like i love fallout so much and to see people going like, man, I love this franchise. Like, this is what it's all about. Uh, just it, it really puts a smile on my face because I'm like, OK, cool. The magic isn't gone yet. Like, yeah. this is- no, you're cooking. I, I remember I got to give you this it, as a person who is an Elder Scrolls guy first. I have to admit. I have not seen anything like this. And like, you're proving your argument with like, you're like, Carl, I'm telling you, Fallout, Fallout. We used to have these battles. And to see you have your moment, and shout out to my man, um, Anchorman V2. He's such a, like, Fallout guy. He would go at me during the Destiny, you know, Fallout 4 days. And it, it's just so cool to see what's happening for Fallout. So I am super happy for you right now. Like, this is just a renaissance to see people appreciate something that you love so much. Yeah, I will say, it's just a, a batty fun fact because I do ideate all the time. I do have on a piece of paper a video game idea for Fallout that I I want to do, and like watching the show, I was just like, oh my god! Like I like it was like a, a like a creative pain I felt of like I I want to do this so bad, but I know they would never let me do it unless I uh, unless I had a game. Like I have to have something to show for it. So it was like particularly motivating. You can ask Laley, bro. <laughs> I finished the show and I was so depressed for two days, not only because I loved it so much, but bro, it gave me such um, imposter syndrome because I'm like, how do you make something as good as Fallout? I was like, how do you do that? 
Mm. And she gave me the words of encouragement, like, look, like one day when you make your thing, mm. there's going to be someone who has that same feeling about mm. what you've made. And I'm like, mm. I hope because like, that's what keeps me going no is doubt. like, I, I experienced something someone made. I'm like, that was so good. How do I do that, man? <laughs> How do I do Facts. that? I just make fucking YouTube videos and podcasts. <laughs> How do I do that? <laughs> That's funny. Fuck the fuck out of me. <laughs> so. Inspiration, baby. Motivation, baby. That's yeah. how we do. Yeah. So I shout love out to it. Lily. She, she pulled me out of it because I was That's just really so. feeling it. I was like, dude, I that was you. so good. So we'll, good. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Got a couple of warm-up questions and we'll talk about the news. Eugene Levy bassist writes in, hey, guys. So the last Ronin is apparently getting a live action movie. What say you, Maddie? Thanks. And have a living off ramen until the next payday because I decided to buy a new video game kind of day. Hey, I got some ramen from World's Market when I was in North Carolina. That shit was amazing. Mm. Amazing. It was like not brothy. Like no, no. Nice. Kind of, yeah, it was really just the noodles. It was amazing. Yeah, recommend people nice. check it out. But shout out, shout out the ramen. The Book of the Dukes. Yes, get yes. Game. Live action movie. What's our feel here, Cog? What's our feel here? You know, like we, uh, we, we feeling confident, like as Fallout inspired a little confidence. I, I always thought animated movie, not live action. But uh, how are you feeling about this one? Ghost of Tsushima, I'm waiting for. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, Roz, uh, I don't know why I couldn't put my finger. Shout out to Ebon, because he's been on me like, Cog, this feels like a Cog game. What's up? And I don't know what about it that, I couldn't put my finger on it. Even Wu Long, Wu Long made me want to play it more. I, I guess it maybe was the graphical fidelity a little bit because I like what they're doing. But to hear about now, first of all, I heard the game. I don't know if it did well. That's another thing, right? I don't know performance wise how, how it's doing. But I don't, I don't get that same vibe. And look, you know, if they nail it with a with a movie, great. Wait, are you um, thinking about the Rise of the Ronin game? Oh, I'm thinking Rise of the Ronin. I'm, <laughs> yo, I'm like, why are we talking about Rise of the Ronin? My bad. You're yeah, talking about last you're good. I, yo, I, I thought you were going to lead into it, but when you kept going, oh, like, no, oh, look at, no, you're oh, thank you for catching me. Yeah. You saved me. You saved yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm like, why is Rise of the Ronin doing anything? Yeah. Your your reaction was so like, I was like, wow, he's not like feeling anything about a, a TMT oh, no, no. last oh. Ronin. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You saved me. You saved me. You talk. You talking about? Okay. I got my Ronins confused. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, woo! No, no, it okay. makes sense because in the script here, it says just the last Ronins. That, make, that makes sense. Got you. Okay, okay, okay. Turtles, yes. <laughs> yes, this is what we want. Okay, oh, no, no. Yeah, there okay, we go. Okay, we back, we back, baby. That was a that was professional podcast and my co-host <laughs> saved me because I went on a diatribe about a PlayStation game that this was not on the, on the docket. But anyway, yes, yes, yes. We we are looking forward to that. <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. Look, I got to shout you out. You know, this is one of the greatest stories I know. Oh, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. That's I apologize for the right reflection, there. but yeah, this uh fire. Let's get it. Yeah, you this have is the one of the, the greatest Dukes, stories. I have the toy of the Dukes. <laughs> Ooh, love it. Now it needed it needed to happen. And and one of those things that, you know, we always wanted that gritty, mature, up-to-date turtle story. We grew up with the kids, you know, Cowabunga, Ninja Power, t- you know, <laughs> Turtles in a Half Shell. I get it. That's always gonna be our core. Yeah. But for the mature, what happens? in this world as things progress. And when I saw that, I'm like, man, this is a this is a really distraught, depressing story. <laughs> like, man, and then you learn how yeah. things went down and it's just like, okay, yeah, tremendous. So I am there day one. I am here to support video game and movie, whatever mm-hmm. they do, because we got to support this take. I love this yeah. take on it. This being a five volume story was the best thing they could have ever done. It made it easy for people to read. It made it, compact enough where it could be a game it could be a movie it could be an anime i think it still should be an animated movie but i'll keep an open mind just because one of my favorite movies ever is the original tmnt movie which is live action i love that movie so much man it, it, it so you can do turtles live action well any of the new turtles movies like i have not seen that kid friendly one from last year yet uh i'm not crazy about the michael bay ones that much i don't think i ever saw the sequel I only saw the first one. I was like, man, I don't know. I made like a half hour video just going on a rant on my Mr. Maddie channel. So it's, yeah, it's, 
Yeah, Bay always get a hold of my childhood and start messing yeah. things up. He did that to transform. <laughs> that's Michael Bay guy. He just won't blow stuff up and he think that's hot. And I'm just like, <laughs> he didn't respect the actors. He didn't have the original Megatron voice. I was like, so I know where you at with that. Yeah, like, yeah, he he did we, my we series. We see eye on that. He got yeah, a I, Stay away from my series, please. <laughs> <laughs> so TMT last run and getting a movie. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Uh, cautiously optimistic, actually, would be the better term. Another movie okay. question. RK128 writes in, Blessed day, Supersonic Dukes. As of this week, we now know the legend that is Keanu Reeves is voicing Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic 3. How excited are you both to see him not only return to video games, but voice the ultimate life form? With how he nailed the role of Johnny Silverhand in Cyberpunk, I can't wait to see how he handles the more emotional, serious moments in Sonic 3. Have a, I didn't expect to put a Fallout game in my game rotation this month, but that show be hitting, man. Kind of day. Thank you, Arthur. Facts. Always. Lord Sonic. My oh, man. Yes, sir. All right. So mm-hmm. this is my this is my take. This is Uh-oh. not have to be everyone's else, everyone else's, but uh oh. This is what I call the bad ending. I don't want Keanu Reeves being fucking shadow, man. I don't get how people are like, yeah, let's go. I think people just want to love Keanu. That's my genuine take on this. Okay. I'm gonna explain why. Look up the clip Robert Pattinson as Shadow the Hedgehog. It's like an eight second clip of them using a line from the Batman. What's his name? Robert what? Robert Pattinson. Okay. It's a line from the Batman movie that he drops. And he put Shadow from his intro uh, to Shadow the Hedgehog. They put that voiceover within kind of lip sync it a little bit. And it is perfect. There was no other casting. It was so good. It went viral. It was that good. There was also the rumor of Hayden Christensen, which I think was that early 2000 angst emo spirit that, you know, when you have Anakin Skywalker kind of captured in that that character, I think you could do something there. But no doubt in my mind, Robert Pattinson every day of the week was the pick for that role. So Keanu Reeves steps in. Now I got to hear like vengeance can't change the past huh like who is that character from Toy Story 4 because this bro's about to say he sounds the same in every role. He does not sound like Shadow, and the guy doesn't change his voice. You're trying to tell me this is Shadow now? He doesn't change his voice. I love him. He fits Johnny Silverhand because that character was built with him in mind. Shadow and Keanu Reeves are not one. I will eat shit on this if I'm wrong, but dude, I I am not excited about this pick at all. Because I, if I hear him kind of talking like this the whole movie, you're like, Sonic, what do we do, man? Dude. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. It could literally ruin the movie for me because Shadow is my favorite character. So yeah, like I'm going to go hard on this one. I I'm absolutely going to go that. hard on this one. I'm fine yeah. with the other castings. I'll keep an open mind. But dude, if you fuck this up, Keanu, I don't care what anyone says about you. You will never be forgiven in my book for ruining Shadow. That's all I'm saying. Because like again, listen to him in Cyberpunk. Listen to him in Toy Story 4. Listen to anything. He sounds the same. He sounds the same. He is not I'm- Shadow. If he's going to sound like that, he's not Shadow. I don't feel breathtaking right now. You're not making me feel breathtaking like Keanu made me feel breathtaking at E3. No. <laughs> no. You Damn, can take really? my breath away for sure. He could. Oh, man. This is, I didn't expect this. This this is a surprise. I did not realize your shadow love goes this strong and to see your disdain for the great Keanu. Damn. What, all right, so what about this? So how about we I try to try to beat the middle? All right, so we... Is it our man Idris Elba? Isn't he doing? That was a perfect what? casting. Okay, so we Knuckles. like that. Yeah, perfect casting. Right. Yeah. And we had we had Johnny Silverhand and, and Idris and, and Cyberpunk. So we doing the one two over here with Sonic, baby. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get the vision. I get the gamer vision here for sure. You got it. You got. You got. All right. It's, listen, I, it's I, a popularity I, hiring. It one hundred percent is like this. Mm. Uh, like I think he's a great guy. I think he's a talented guy. He fits roles right, said. but like. It's for characters that have him built in mind, like John Wick works. Okay, you know, okay. Uh, Johnny Silverhand works. Like these guys are made with him in mind. But then mm-hmm. you get to someone like Shadow, who's a pre-established character who mm-hmm. sounds a particular way. And then you, you don't think he could do it? The great Keanu. If he, if he does it, but bro, listen to any role he's been in. He he sounds sounds similar. He does. I will give you that. He sounds similar in a lot of. And roles. that's a difference. That's why there's certain actors, voice wise, I really like, and some that I'm not like. I, I mean, with no disrespect, but I got like I think of like Erica Limbeck as an example. Like you can hear her in every role. She she uh uh what's her name um oh my god I'm forgetting her name Laura Bailey now like she kind of she used oh, to change her voice yeah. a lot. Um, there's a few other male actors that are not coming to mind right now, but there are some that I just hear too much of them in 
and it fair. overrules the role. That's fair. It doesn't hit because it's like I hear the person, not the character now. Ooh. And Keanu is one of those actors. He's a, he's fair. great, but he he doesn't change his voice enough. Where enough. I think like Max Middleman. I didn't know Max Middleman was Red Thirteen in remake until after I beat the game and saw the credits. Like that, and that dude is Ryuji, who's more like talking like this all the time. And then he kind of turns on the, the notch and goes range. Low. He's got yeah. insane range. Robbie Damon, another one. I have infinite yeah. respect for Robbie Damon. This guy is is an insane voice actor. The range of his voice is incredible. There's many out there. I just don't think Keanu's got the range. If he's got the range and can subtly pull it out, if he's going to pull out all the stops for Shadow, again, I'll eat shit all day. I just don't think it's going to happen. I I, I'm with you on range. My only thing that I think you're being super hard on is that I do feel Shadow is a pocket. It's, cl- it's a closer pocket for him. But to your point, he does need to differentiate enough so that we don't hear Keanu in it. Like, we need to hear Shadow. And I, I get that. I get that. That's fair. We can see it. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to be paying attention to this. Now. Duke Kaboom here at Shadow the Hedgehog. It's like Can- Canada's greatest stunt driver. I can't with you. Yeah. <laughs> Spare me, Keanu, please. <laughs> Number one on the docket, Fallout 4 is getting its next-gen update on April 25th. That's when you should probably want to return to the Commonwealth. We have the Bethesda Net article up here in front of us, and here's what it writes. Bethesda Game Studios is releasing a free Fallout 4 update for download on Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5. This free update includes native applications for PlayStation 5 and Series X and S, performance mode and quality mode settings, as well as stability improvements and fixes. Experience up to 60 FPS and increased resolutions. Fallout 4 players on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One will also receive a free update with stability improvements, login, and quest fixes. As for PC players, they said that Fallout 4 on next-gen PCs are going to have widescreen and ultra-wide support, as well as fixes to creation kit and a variety of quest updates. Players of PC versions on Steam, Microsoft, and GOG will receive stability, mods, and bug fixes. For Chinese and Japanese language players on PC, Bethesda Net login issues have been resolved, fixing access to mods. Alongside this exciting update, Fallout 4 will be available to purchase on the Epic Game Store and Steam Deck Verified. They also mentioned there's more content. They say the Enclave Remnants is going to be added. These are, by the way, free Creation Club items, so it comes from the community. It's not like Bethesda made these individually. But anyway, Enclave Remnants, they say, bring the pre-war cabal, the Enclave, into the Fallout 4 storyline. In this new quest, Echoes of the Past, can you stop the Enclave from spreading their dangerous ideology and gaining a foothold in the Commonwealth? Along with the workshop items and Enclave Colonel uniform, they are including the following previously released Creation Club content items in Enclave Weapon Skins, Enclave Armor Skins, Tesla Cannon, Hellfire Power Armor, XO2 Power Armor, and Heavy Incinerator. There's also the Makeshift Weapon Pack. They say, ever thought a piggy bank would make for a great weapon in a pinch? This weapon pack includes a variety of unconventional objects that have been transformed into deadly weapons, such as a baseball launcher, a nail gun, and a piggy bank. Last but not least, Halloween Workshop, leftover from an ill-fated Halloween party, thrown by the New England Technocrat Society, these 38 new Halloween decorations include witches, cauldrons, ghouls, and more. Decorate for Halloween or make your settlements spooky all year round. So, Cog, that is the next gen update. And I kid you not, we have a full like page and a half of writings. Oh, yeah. Purple pen and pant. Reading Dukes. Hear me, hear me. With the Fallout 4 current gen update being announced. What is your plan with the game? Dip your toes in to check out the new content, start a new playthrough, pray that Bethesda fixes my bug in Dima's memory for Far Harbor so I can finish the DLC. Crawl out through the Fallout, baby. So, Cog, you said you're playing 76 solo right now as you get to Fallout 4. Are you going to ditch 76 with Fallout 4 coming out, or are you going to you know, try to balance the two? Like, Are we going all in on Fallout? What's the game plan here, sir? I mean, in theory, it would be nice to try to play both, but I <laughs> have a funny feeling once Fallout 4 comes. Yeah, there's a couple of DLCs I did miss, you know, after being the main game. But, um, yeah, no, this has to happen. You know, next-gen update. 60 fps let's go you know what I'm saying performance mode a little disappointed just the nitpick i would have liked it have been right there at the launch you know what i'm saying i would have liked it right there just really i know it's only really a week but i'm just saying it would have not lined up pretty nice but look still i will be going back to it and um yeah man i have such an appreciation for a classic fallout experience the vats that i know and love with that slow motion that you 
blow that leg off and you know what I'm saying? And like mm-hmm. just really like I because the show portrayed fault dwellers and the whole experience so well. I have such a renewed appreciation to want to live and play in this world. And these updates sound cool. You know, they're doing a lot of things also for, um, I think, Fallout Shelter as well. They, yeah, like all Fallout the Shelter things. Getting like, all the Fallout TV show content. It's getting it all, bro. They 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 added more of that than in 76 and Fallout 4. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And I, is it, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't Shelter on console as well? Yes. Yes. I need to download that for Barog. I think that'd be a nice little. I love little, that game. It yeah, is really it, great. It was good. It yeah. was good. I remember it. So yeah, look, this is this is well going to be well received. I think people are going to be coming back to it in droves, and it's good to see. And in the in the uh, the mod. Con- oh, question: Mod content disables achievements? No. Yes, I think there's uh-huh. an achievement enabler, but okay, okay, don't quote me on that. Got you, got you. But other than that, now, this is super dope. Love, love to see them putting this, this type of stuff out and continuing with with this franchise. And th- listen, the, the iron is hot. Yes. You gotta, you gotta go with it right now. Yeah, I agree. I, I do, I do echo your sentiment. I wish it was a little bit earlier. At yes. the end of the day, you know, you see how many people are flying into Fallout Four mm-hmm. without the next gen update. So I feel like they kind of missed a window there. It was a missed opportunity. We'll talk about that with games in general for Bethesda. But uh, yeah, I think this next gen update looks great. I, I did expect a little bit more. You you have to wonder what the idea was where uh, this was announced at the end of 2022. We went all 2023, no update. And then you get into 2024 and they finally say like, it's coming in 2024. Okay, mm-hmm. we figured as much because, you know, you said nothing into the new year. And then it was the assumption, oh, it's got to launch the week of the TV show. Like that's obvious right maybe some people thinking it's bigger than we expected are they going to do kind of what they did with skyrim anniversary edition here's this paid add-on and it gives you all the creation club content and then it's coming and it's coming later than the show release date and it's only three pieces of creation club content it's a little weird i'll admit Mm -hmm. like if you look at it very critically what they're doing here is a little strange for how long the wait was yes but as someone who loves fallout 4 I'm excited to get back into it. I already got the platinum trophy on PlayStation. I have a lot of hours on Steam. I've spent more hours with this game than any other probably in my life just because of my career. So, mm-hmm. you know, I I don't think I'll be doing a full playthrough. Uh, actually, I know I won't be doing a full playthrough. I'm just not in the mode for Fallout 4. I'm kind of hungry more for the originals in Fallout New Vegas mm-hmm. right now. Okay. Uh, but Fallout 4... Uh, you know what I haven't done is the DLC in a while. And so I've been playing Same. a little bit of Nuka World on tour. That's been, or sorry, though, that's the, that's the 76 event. Whoa, I got to slow down. I'm getting that 76, <laughs> hey, that 76 rock. baby. Let's yeah, go. Watch out. <laughs> uh, I've been doing the Nuka World DLC, though. And uh, that's been pretty good to kind of go through. That's a little more shooty, looty, raider focused DLC, but it's fun. Um, and I've been enjoying that quite a bit. But Far Harbor to me is like the best DLC Bethesda's ever made. Like, wow. it is so good, in my opinion. Like, it's not only just like great, but to me, it, it signifies like the ultimate clapback. Like they just got dragged after Fallout 4. Like you guys can't do role playing. And they're like, no, watch this. And they like put skill checks back in the game. Mm. They put choice and consequence in three endings. Like it's nice. phenomenal. It's like nice. the true to the Fallout atmosphere that you saw in like three and point lookout. It's amazing stuff. Like if anyone's listening to this and you haven't played Fallout 4 as DLC, if you're going to play Same. any of them, I think Horror. Automaton is great. I think that Nuka World is great. If you like the workshop stuff, it's already going to be kind of baked into your game. Automatron is actually kind of already a workshop quest. You know, it's designed to let you build robots as companions mm-hmm. and it puts robots in the open world as enemy types, which is cool. But yeah, when it comes to the DLC in that game, Far Harbor is the creme de la creme, the main oh. dish. Like that is the one you got to play. Do not oh, miss out on it. They got one of the best vaults in all of Fallout there. It's a, I'll just say this. It's a murder mystery investigation quest involving other robots. It's mm, awesome stuff, man. Dope, it's so dope. good. Yeah, so just high praise here for Far Harbor. That might be one I can see if I have the time. I got to be realistic. Like I am playing two games right now I'm very excited about uh, that are under embargo. And so like I have to be honest with myself and go, yeah. like, I'm probably going to play for a handful of hours for like a night yeah. or two and kind of just transition yeah. over i'm always playing these games so i'm a little more i i made peace with that you know that's okay with me uh so i'm, I'm always going to be chipping through stuff but yeah I, I don't think i'll be diving in big time to fallout 4 next gen but i think for people who have not played in a while and you haven't played that dlc oh boy you're in for a treat like i think nice. time has been very kind to fallout 4 and i think in a post starfield world 
where people kind of miss that hallmark exploration. I agree. I, agree. I do think there will be a renewed. I think there will be revisionist history on Fallout Four. I'll just Absolutely. Say. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and then I, I, I'm in, in in relation to Starfield. My hope is that with Shattered Space, that we get a little bit of you know what I'm saying that kind of energy as well. Yeah, we actually have a bunch of Fallout write-ins. One's from Ooh. Annie Young, who is a new Fallout fan and would like some advice. Okie dokie, Dukes. I love that. People got to do that more. That's a good one. So with the Pretty great Fallout show bringing new attention to the games, I'm looking for some advice. I've only played Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 for about an hour each and just never really got into them. I'm ready to play a Fallout game, but I don't know where to start. I often hear that 3 is the best, though some also seem to think New Vegas is the one. I'm worried about getting into either of those as they're very dated and probably have ancient systems and mechanics that would drive me away. I'm thinking of waiting for Fallout 4's update and playing it, but want to be open to 76 as well. So I'm looking to see what your suggestions are for someone who should enter into the Fallout universe. Thanks and have a, was that dude seriously pumping himself up under the covers in the front of the whole barracks kind of day? Yeah, that, that part was out of pocket. But some of the humor in that game, yo, Maximus Whoa. had a wild line in this show, bro. He had, <laughs> now he had two wild lines in two episodes in a row, bro. This guy was crazy. I love Maximus. He's my favorite character in the show. I thought he was hilarious. He lo- was hilarious. But yeah. there's a couple of scenes when, when I'm like, oh, Oh, they going there. Yeah, yeah. Like there's yeah. no punching, no, no pulls, pulling the punches <laughs> or certain situations. And yeah, that barrack scene is a little crazy. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I love it though. That yeah. that's the crazy Fallout 2 humor that I don't think yes. many people are aware of. They're like, oh wow, they're taking liberties. I'm like, no, if you play Fallout 2, like, bro, you could become a porn star in that game. Like that game is out of pocket. <laughs> you gotta see it for yourself. They do some wild shit in that game. So yeah, like, it's it's awesome to see. Uh, that people are connected with that weird humor that Fallout has. Now, mm-hmm. for a new Fallout fan, my take would be this. What you got? Let me hear. I'm a little biased in that I don't think, I think people over-exaggerate the data mechanics around Bethesda Game Studios games uh, as a whole. Like, I, I know that's a take and a half, and I know many people really resent Bethesda. I think if you look at many, and I think it's because people approach Bethesda as like a AAA team the size of Ubisoft. Like when they made these games, they were under 100 people. And I think perspective is everything. Like this was a small team who made something that's very big. The problem is, as they progressed, it's tar- It's tougher to do that, as we've learned with like Starfield. But uh, when you look at their games, I think the mechanics are extremely acceptable for their size and especially everything else they do well. But I don't think Fallout 3 or New Vegas are these extremely unacceptable, unplayable, dated, dated janky shooters. like. You point and you shoot. They're not going to play like Halo Infinite. That's for sure. Uh, Fallout 4 plays infinitely better, no doubt about it. But I don't... Fallout 4, I'll just say this. Fallout 4's improved shooting did not do more for me than what the conversations, the world, the storytelling that 3 New Vegas brought did. So pick your poison effectively. If shooting does matter that much to you, 4 is probably your best pick. 76 has the same shooting, but you have online latency, which can be a bit disruptive. But 4 plays great it, it plays like a really solid first person shooter i think machine games help them uh on that angle of things and and you can really feel that it kind of reminds me a bit of the wolfenstein games and the way guns handle um and and they did a good job turning the corner on that but when you look at fallout 3 and and new vegas um yes yeah, shooting and looting is part of it but it's not the only thing you're doing whereas fallout 4 there is just some areas dedicated to shooting and looting but 3 and new vegas like most of these areas have characters and stories and lore to uncover. And I think it works really well. They have way more unique loot, might I add, which mm. makes playing the game fun because, yeah, it doesn't shoot the best, but you get like that gun, which which is like yeah. this crazy revolver. You get like the gun that I, I'm forgetting the name of it off the top of my head, but you can like call in a laser strike once a day. Mm-hmm. Like, you can do some wild shit in these games that, that they are very gimmicky weapons, yes. some really crazy melee weapons. So I'm I'm partial to say, this is not a series that I would say you have to work backwards from and like play four. Oh, I like this a lot. And then go to three in New Vegas. Like, I really do think you shouldn't let three in New Vegas scare you away. And if you do play these games and you're like, nah, like I just mad, I can't, sorry, go play four. That's what everyone I tell, I tell them to do that. And they find something they love. The beauty of fallout is there's so many different experiences across this franchise. There's so many ways to get involved um and whether you're looking for the online game or the first person shooting game or the role-playing game or the hardcore role-playing game like it's all there uh, it's just up to what flavor you're looking for so if those i say please give an honest try to three in new vegas there's some of the best rpgs ever made 
top five games of all time for me personally, or top 10, because New Vegas would be in the top 10. But um, mm-hmm. phenomenal games. Give them a shot. See yeah. how you like them. And uh, enjoy the exploration. That's yes. that's more of the gameplay than the that's shooting. The it's the mm-hmm. exploration, like going from point A to point B. Let yourself wander, like see something in the distance. Go to it. That's a big part of the experience here for Fallout. And, I, you know, but all these games we're mentioning do it really well. But three, New Vegas especially. So give them a shot. See how it goes. Follow up. Let us know where you start. But I know a lot of people are, are writing in about like where to start with Fallout. Cog, what would you think is the best place to start for someone who's not like me and a freak about this series? <laughs> no, it's a good question. I mean, I, I'm going to just go by my own history, which is, you know, Fallout 3. That was my first Fallout game. You know, as a person who came over there kicking and scratching, very hesitant to get into the series, didn't know what it was about. I'm like, man, this game looks so drab and the colors. What's, what's going on? Obviously, mm-hmm. Now I know what's going on, <laughs> but you know, so it, it's one of those things that I never forget. You know, my first experience, and then I, I think I remember even seeing like a super mutant for the first time. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? And the thing that really took it over the top. You mentioned the combat. You mentioned how oh, it's not the greatest shooter or whatever. But I'll be honest with you, when I played Vats and used it for the first time. I was like, that's next gen. That's something that I've really never seen in combat games. And I like it. I like to be able to target, you know, weak points. And if someone has, you know, armor on their head and you can, you know, shoot for the arm and shoot for their yeah. leg and they show you the percentages, that system fundamentally changed the game and made it so exciting. The humor is great. They go there with certain things. <laughs> and um, yeah, I would go three, New Vegas, four. And look, if you want to try to just to see what 76 is about, there's nothing, yeah. you know, to put you up. But I will say core Fallout games first <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before you do something. So you can understand the universe and understand what's going on. And it is a sense of exploration. I love, you know, looking at terminals. And they, one thing about Fallout, they put so much in their world to in notes and things that you read and you see what's going on in mystery. There's some horror elements when you go into certain areas. Yeah. You know, there's a part in the there's a part in the film that really, the, the show that really hit hard for me as a person who loves three. And I don't want to spoil what episode it happens, but there's an area when you play Fallout 3, they're like, yo, don't go over there. It's mm-hmm. wild in this particular area. And I'm like, okay, or this particular structure or building. And I'm like, and I never forget that when I saw the show, I'm like, yo, they go into that spot. That's a Fallout 3 reference. I'm like, it hits harder. So if you just <sighs> watch the show, I personally think you need to start with three first. And yeah, they, they go there, man. They really do it. Especially what, what happened in this world prior is super dope. Yeah, I agree. We got two write-ins that kind of asked the same question here. So let's mm-hmm. talk to both Agent of Chaos 904 and MK. Agent of Chaos writes, Howdy Dukes. With the success of the Fallout TV show, the demand for Fallout 5 is higher than ever, right? Of course, Bethesda needs to release Elder Scrolls 6 before Fallout 5. But as we know, at this rate, it'll be the 2030s before Fallout 5. Would you think Bethesda may end up spinning off a new studio to accommodate this? Or perhaps will other studios be pulled in to help co-develop the next Fallout? Have an amazing show and day, guys. Meanwhile, MK writes, hey, lads, after the much needed success of the Fallout show, what do you think this means for Bethesda and Microsoft going forward? Naughty Dog seems to be done with The Last of Us after part two, but possibly due to the critical acclaim of the live action series, part three in the series seems all but confirmed. Is BGS at risk of becoming the Fallout studio? Or could we potentially see another Oblivion Fallout game? Have a hailstones in April kind of day. Thank you, MK and Agent of Chaos for writing in. So this is the big question right now. I'm going to answer this with spoilers intact because I think it's very important. So if you're listening to this, all of our shows are time stamped. If you don't want the Fallout TV show spoiled for you, skip ahead. And I only say this because I know me. And I know I am not going to be able to talk about what I want to have happen in the future without mm. spoiling the show. And I guess other Fallout games in that relation right. because of four and New Vegas a little bit. So yeah. we're going to put spoilers in the time span. Yeah. For this yeah. <laughs> Listen at your own risk yes. is what I'll say. Listen at your own risk. Um, but know that I'm going to spoil the Fallout TV show in its entirety here. So be aware. Three, two, one. Okay. So. When it comes to the next Fallout game, I don't know what the game plan is, but it's very clear that the TV show is serving as the answer to New Vegas 2. That is clearly the plan because the show ends with a shot of the New Vegas Strip 
with uh, Kyle McLachlan's Lachlan's character, Hank McClain, looking over and his power armor all cut up. It's like, that's a fucking sick shot. Insane shot. Love it. But you see the strip is not active, which means Bethesda is about to do what I thought was the sickest shit ever. And they're going to pick a canon ending for New Vegas and build upon it. You know, what's awesome about this is most of these fallout stories exist in pockets, right? They exist in these pockets where like you have Project Purity over here. And then you have like what's going on with the Institute over there. And like you see like a side quest in Fallout 3 hinting at what's going on over here right. in a much bigger way. And they gradually move down the timeline. The Wasteland's rebuilding in some ways. But like everyone's got their own set of issues and way of rebuilding. Mm-hmm. And obviously we see in this story the way of rebuilding on the West Coast is going to be through this cold fusion energy source, mm-hmm. right? This new infinite energy source. And we see the lights come on at the end. Mm-hmm. I have this theory that Bethesda is building up to a Fallout 5 set on the West Coast. I say that because Mm. Fallout 4 has this side quest um, with the Cabot House. And at the end, uh, connected to this entire Dunwich mystery that's been ongoing since Fallout 3, uh, Bethesda, uh, the the character Jack Cabot mentions that there is an ancient alien city in the Mojave. Mm. And it's something that he's going to go explore. Now, since Bethesda already did with the replicated man quest in Fallout 3, saying like, oh, there's this railroad, there's this institute, there are synths, and you do this whole side quest, and many mm-hmm. people playing Fallout 3 are like, oh, it's a oh, great side quest. Okay. Then you get to Fallout 4, it's like, oh, no, this is the whole, that was the whole fucking story of the game right there. Mm-hmm. And so Bethesda has a knack for doing that. Side quest tucked in, explore it later. To me, that was so blatantly deliberate that I made a video about it in like 2015 or 16 going like, yo. Pay attention to this. Mm. So then you see before the TV show, Todd Howard goes, oh, there were things that that Prime and Kilter Films wanted to do with the Fallout TV show that we said, don't do that because we're going to do that Fallout 5. Yes. I'm like, oh, why would that's a that's a confirmation right there as far as I'm concerned, because you hear that and you go, well, it can't be on the East Coast unless they mean something with factions. That's all possible. But it likely had to do with the setting and what was happening in the setting, because that stuff is so far removed from the East Coast that that's why Bethesda was always building on the East Coast to not interfere with the West Coast. So now what they're doing is building upon the West Coast. They have this element here from Fallout 4 that they're no doubt going to tug at. You have the TV show. It ends with a New Vegas 2 reference, if you will, and that the season two is going to pick up where New Vegas left off. Whether they go with the Robert House ending, the Yes Man ending, They go with the NCR ending, except that you nuke the long 15 with Ulysses. Like there's three ways they could really go with this. I'm thinking it's the Mr. House ending because you fucking see the man in the end of the show, which was sick. Like, dude, I lost my mind when I saw that shit. Bro. So to me, like I look, I have moderated my Bethesda fanboy ways from when I was 18, right? Like I brought myself back down to earth. I've been more critical of them. They are fucking cooking right now and it blew my mind that people were really trying to detract from if this was kojima if this was any other motherfucker in this industry it would have been a whole ass different reaction but we got these weirdos who are like they're retconning the story they're ruining the lore (laughs) to the point where they pretty much had to shortcut a little bit of what's going to happen in season two and be like yo look here's the timeline we'll just say the fall of shady sands is after new vegas no the the fact that the lack of media literacy just Mm. popped up out of nowhere media comprehension gone Mm. no one understood anymore season one story continues in season two Mm -hmm. and that there are threads intentionally left hanging like no no they retconned it it yeah, was, I seen that. People were like the law guys. Are, are, this is a small sub yeah. But when I spoke to my real ones, when I Bro. spoke to you, spoke yeah. to my man Anchor Man, they're like, nah, these dudes don't know what they Yeah, no, about. it just it, and I get I know it's a small majority, it's a loud, it's a Literally. loud, small section of the fan base, but it's no less annoying because it signifies what's been wrong with the Fallout fandom, which I've said for a while, which is like so many different sects have just tried to steal joy from others. There's the original dudes from one and two. Or like you can't enjoy Bethesda or Obsidian games. That's not the true experience. Then there's the Bethesda enjoyers who can't have that fun because Obsidian fans or New Vegas fans are whispering in their ears how much better the role playing is in this other game. Like there's no just we love Fallout. It's right. always this new gate being erected. <laughs> so the best thing the Fallout TV show did was put a microscope on these annoying ass people mm-hmm. who have been trying to ruin Fallout for people for nine years now. Because since Fallout Four came out. What happened was anyone who liked Bethesda, look, I got my feet put to the fire. 
So Let's I go. I know what Obsidian and, and, and New Vegas fans are going through right now. Talk. The particular type, not all of them, yeah. but the particular type. I know what they're going through because I was out there loud and proud about everything Bethesda. I got out of control and and rightly so. People put me in my place and started shitting on me, making videos about me. I was like, you know what? It's time mm. to reflect. I'm a little out of control here. Okay. And that's where I started to build this, this new, more critical version of myself yes, yes. that understood, hey, Bethesda is not perfect. Right. They're going to fuck things up. And I mm. learned at the ripe age of 18, right? So- <laughs> All I'm saying, man, is Bethesda is doing something unprecedented for Fallout. They're doing something really exciting across the franchise. And their goal was to make something that didn't feel like just an add-on, but like a meaningful part of the storyline. And they did that. So I agree with what everyone's writing. I'd love for them to figure something out with a game. But the TV show, I'm actually very excited for what's happening next, which I didn't expect to happen. I knew I'd probably enjoy it, but I loved it. But man, dude, the, the fact that season two is going to continue a story, we haven't seen that what, since Fallout 1 to Fallout 2. It hasn't happened since then. Mm-hmm. So like, this is, to me, commendable. It's exciting. It's exactly what they wanted. The fact that, sorry, I'm on a rant here. Oh, let's go. I'm, this is what I'm here for. I'm here for this part. Everyone thought before the show came out, oh, full darms. Bethesda's going to inject their own version of Fallout into, into the classics. Mm. Tell me what shred outside of the visuals of Fallout 3, 4, 76. Tell me what from that show pops up from those games that they made. They only dug into the classics in New Vegas. Only because it's all on the West Coast. They had arguably the most steady hand in not infiltrating and pushing their stuff in. And people still fucking complain. Hmm. Blows my mind, dude. So I think they I am all on board for the vision. I'm like, I see what they're doing. I know them well enough at this point. I've covered them for over a fucking decade. They are building up to a fallout five on the West coast. The question Ooh. is, as I kick it to you is what your thoughts on the show were, but like, Ooh. what do they do to, to build up to a fallout five? Like what's, there's gotta be an in-betweener, right? Is it the mm. remasters? Is it a remake? Is it a, a full blown project from a new studio? Because it seems like based on the actions of Todd, like we talked about at the top of the show with, Elder Scrolls show, like, eh, right. you know, it's got to be the right thing. Gotta be they right. don't just do things. Like, they're not, they understand the desire for a yeah. new game before Fallout 5. But if there's not a good offer or a good idea, they're not going to do it. And that doesn't mean it's always going to be executed properly, but it does mean that that's the intention. That's what they're going to do. That's the code at Bethesda. So, with that cog, what do you think the oh. answer is? And of course, I want to get your spoiler filled thoughts on the show. Man, I mean, the answer is they are absolutely cooking (laughs) and they can do what they choose. I mean, this series, it is such a love letter to the series. It is such a love letter to a person who respects and appreciates the lore of this game down to the fact of, you know, when I hear the crackling of, of, of radiation on the pit boy. And, mm. and I, I hear about the, you know, stem pack and, you know, r- rat away. And first of all, shout out to Walter, Gog- uh, Walton Goggins. That's my man. You know what I'm saying? He's been, I follow him since the, he used to be on this series called the shield on FX with these kind of mm. gray area, crooked cops <laughs> going on. <laughs> and he always played these morally gray characters very well. I believe he was a justified as well. He is phenomenal as mm. the goal. I love also my girl Lucy. Like again, that that vault dweller naiveness mm. and, and and the humor. And then shout out to yeah, shout out to my man Maximus again. They really did a fantastic job of having these characters in this world where you don't know where it's going. But the thing where it took it to the next level for me is they go there. You want that grime? You want that go? Oh, it's here. But we still got our classic humor. But the thing that makes Fallout fall out to me, in addition to this harsh world, is when you hear that 50s, you hear that music, you hear that, that's Fallout. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, when you hear that, like, it, it's just such a good feel and then it feels like you're playing a video game we're going on to the next place and what i like is there was a classic line where the girl says to her because you could tell like she's all her goody goody you know, you're gonna keep you're gonna keep the golden rule we're gonna we're gonna reclaim uh, you know we're gonna do things right and he's like when he had her in front of that that radiation water mm-hmm. 
And she, that thirst was breaking and them stats yeah. was low. Yeah. And she he was like, I'm never gonna be you. She's like, Oh no, you're me. You just you know so you, what he, he had a classic line. It was like yeah. you're me, but you don't realize it, you're get you're, you're just not there yet. Yeah. But yeah. we're the same, you know, kind of thing. So again, fantastic. I thought the power armor was done well. But look, all let's sum it back up to where we at with Todd. Is that I love that he said Fallout Five. Hey, you can't do that. We're gonna do that for five, right? Mm. But we gotta go to the elephant in the room, right? We can't be on season three of this show, and there ain't no new Fallout game ready. To, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's the problem. Like you, the iron is hot. You have the hottest thing moving. People are saying, Maddie, this is the greatest video game adaptation mm-hmm. right now. And we know the other heavy hitters that's running around in these streets, yeah. right? Respect to, was it Arcane, Last of Us? People are saying, no. I got people who don't never even watch Fallout, play the Fallout game. No, it, yo, this series is it. So they got one. I've never seen, like, no disrespect. I know what always comes down to why we always got to, you know, disrespect Halo. But I ain't see the Halo series move in engagement like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it did well for a show, Right. But in terms of galvanizing people, so now, bro, you would have been proud of me on ILP. I said, my boy has always said, we cannot have a not de- a, not a dedicated Fallout studio. Like, what are you going to call it? Vault Tech studio? You're going to do something. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we cannot go a whole new generation and there is no Fallout game, right? Mm-hmm. So we have the players in the room. We have in exile the OGs. All right, one and two. We have Obsidian, New Vegas. Now, I get it. Todd, I know this is your baby. I know you are sensitive. You don't like anybody touching and messing around. I get that. But you need to come up with a, a plan with Phil, and we need to have multiple teams. There's this thing called multiple teams. <laughs> and you need to have one ma- made and ready for Fallout, this get, this series has now shown it is the de facto. I have to bend the knee now, and you know I'm the Elder Scrolls guy saying this. It is the de facto series right now. It has the title right now. We don't know when we're gonna get Elder Scrolls right now, but Fallout yeah. at minimum on this showcase, you need to come out on stage and you better have a PNG ready with a five next to it <laughs> and say, I, you just show the damn PNG and say you were, you will shake the building right now. You miss an opportunity. I'm telling, look, remaster, Fallout 4, that's cute. All that other, you got to give us something. You got, so if maybe you ain't ready for five, it's time, um, Obsidian, New Vegas, something something bro like you cannot go a whole generation without this with this level of quality and this level of zeitgeist you are shaking the internet right now yeah. this is this is money ready to be print. y'all like money corporate cog y'all like money right yeah let's get to it, yeah, so it, it it's a <laughs> yeah it, it is a really interesting position because you look at the obvious candidates obsidian Hands super full. It's so tough to imagine. Yeah, them doing that. I they want them to do it more than anything, but it, their hands I mean, are so. And I, and I mean, we know about clockwork, but what else? I was I was going to say, NXL is taking on their most ambitious project in pre alpha. I would love to see them make use of I don't think they should be done with the Wasteland 3 engine. Like, if, if NXL yeah, 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 made yeah. a small spin off Fallout game with the, I mean, the assets are there. The, the writing, the team is there. The, you got Brian Fargo, dude. Mm. It blew my mind. I was watching a video by Tim Kaine, right? Fuck oh, Yeah. God. Tim Tim Kaine is like the founding father of Fallout, right? Like he was mm-hmm. there for the opening three months working on this project alone when Fallout was considered a B-tier project. Imagine yes. that nowadays, right? Brian Fargo, another one of the founding fathers Legends. of Fallout, right? Absolute legend. You got one of the most brilliant choice and consequence brains ever sitting mm. there. Who mm. He doesn't even need to be fully involved. Just let him oversee the writing, the narrative, the choices, and take that same philosophy that you did with Wasteland 3, which is one of the most phenomenal Fallout style experiences. It's a series that gave birth to Fallout, but it's one of the most phenomenal Fallout style experiences and and let them do that. Like If that is a possibility, I think it's the most likely one that doesn't overcommit to like, let's do a big budget AAA Fallout game where there are assets made, there is something you could dip back into, and it does call back to the originals in a way that you can evolve them, like whatever it may be, man. I would do 
insane things to see in exile back on full out because i'd say this is a take i would put them above obsidian in my personal priority i want new vegas too more but if you're talking about who's got the choice and consequence chops oh they got that no they oh got my that. god did they never take that, that. yeah they yeah, got that and, and they are obsessed with that stuff like i've always wanted like like larian is um so yeah man i mean larian would be another obvious pick for sure what about what about we meet in the middle what about a fallout one and two remake announcement in the in the vein of fallout three and four engine vats you go there what, what about that oh of course i mean that would be great but i just think fallout fallout 2 is a really tall task fallout one's Ooh. on a timer so you have to change the story yes yeah which is point. which is yeah. tough yeah, i think if point. you here's what i would say if we're looking for like the easy package yes. bring fallout one and two to modernize them they're mm-hmm. just not super accessible Right. When I say modernize them, it could, you could still keep that same camera perspective and everything. Brush up the visuals, though. Um, give it kind of like what Wasteland Director's Cut got or, or, or what some of the old Age of Empires games get. Like, clean it up a little bit, right? Like, like make it controller compatible. Uh, try to figure out how to get the visuals a little more scrubbed up. Uh, streamline the gameplay a little bit better where the turn order is clear. Like, there are things that quality life improvements could bring the classic fallouts to a whole new level. And I think you do that, Bring Fallout 3 and New Vegas forward in a remaster package of some kind. Uh, if you over deliver and kind of do the fall, like one thing I wouldn't complain about is I, I know I talked earlier about Fallout 3 and New Vegas's gameplay being fine. And it's exactly that. It's fine. It works for what it is. But if you did like, hey, we have the Fallout 4 shooting, but it's in the Fallout 3 world and everything else is the same. Like that would be amazing. Uh, that would that would be really the best of both worlds. Uh, I just think bringing those games forward like th- that is your easy opt in right now as a stopgap. As for this next entry, it's really mm-hmm. tough because your best answers that are also in house that share information and share assets and share a leader, most importantly, are kind of occupied right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe with apparently uh, Out- Outer Worlds two being further along, mm-hmm. and you also have Avowed apparently coming out this year, which I don't believe yet, but we'll see. Uh, you have two big games that might just kind of be off. The- they're done with grounded, so like Pentiment's done. Mm-hmm. Sawyer is sh- available. What's up? Sawyer's available. I don't know if he wants to make a game that big. He seems true, true, to be kind of over it, but I, I would I mean you want to make some noise. If oh. you came out and was just like, yeah, we're doing New Vegas again, or just a Fallout game, Sawyer at the top. Oh my God, dude. That would Bruh. be that's the thing. At a certain point, you have to lead with a heavy hand if you're a businessman here. Mm-hmm. If I am at the top and I understand there's a human element to it that I'm not acknowledging right now. Mm-hmm. If I am at the top and I'm looking at the success of fallout in general before the show. And now after the show, mm-hmm. the maximum amount of casuals yet in series history has now set sights on this franchise. We don't have something maybe in production at all, bro. I, I just feel like it's such a missed opportunity where you either got to go in and start moving around people and be like, look, I mean, Phil and Todd are best for our close friends. <laughs> I mean, let's, Phil. Let's hope Phil, that friendship is very tight. Todd done crowd on the shoulder. I'll make it exaggerated. <laughs> when the 76 bomb and Phil yeah. said, I got you. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make this right. And they turn, listen, the friendship's there. So I, you can't tell me Phil ain't going to have some conversation to at least, look, we get it. In respect to Todd, this is his baby. He is very protective of these things. But this is now to the point where Fallout is could arguably, as of today, be like the face. <laughs> of like, like you, it's the number one thing moving right now. You- and it is whenever they do something big, like Fallout Four. It was everywhere. ESPN was reporting on Fallout Four. ESPN, a fucking sports network, was reporting on Fallout Four because it was set in Fenway. But yes. that's the type of traffic engagement attention that's driven by fallout uh and elder scrolls obviously the same thing when elder scrolls 6 comes around it will be the same Uh, but that's a whole other conversation on just how they left that elder scrolls gap empty i think they really Mm -hmm. leaned on online a lot as Mm -hmm. sort of like the only strong answer and it's a great answer i mean it's a phenomenal game but with fallout you have such legacy and so many options available and look fergus urquhart ceo of obsidian has been very loud about his desire to do a new Vegas too. Let's go. And I don't know if you could pick up a phone and start making that move oh. a little bit sooner, but 
the demand and desire is there. I mean, Fergus' exact words were, I want to work on another Fallout game before I die. Mm. That's personal. That's and that personal. guy was there as one of the building blocks. He was there for New Vegas as well. Like, that's personal. Yeah. And, and I feel like there's just too much personal stakes to not get a deal done. I don't know if, if Obsidian were to do it, if that would be done in a timely manner. But look, mm-hmm. the best thing that Bethesda ever did for the series, if it's not evident enough now by the Fallout TV show, was saying to Obsidian, here's our tech. Just go make another game with it mm. and add on minimal stuff. When you look at three to New Vegas, there's a very, you can aim down sites. Mm. They have a reputation system. Yes. And a survival system. Yes. They don't really overhaul anything from Fallout 3 to New Vegas, and that's okay. Fallout 4's Far Harbor DLC showed that you can do skill checks, role playing, all in that engine, all in that tech. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but my point being is that you can hand that over potentially and get Obsidian just cooking on Fallout 4 tech. I mean, it's there, it's ready to go. Yeah. Uh, there's just a lot of obvious decisions. Like, again, the. The, the entire marketplace for modding and how it's being handled with Skyrim. Why is that not there on Fallout? Why was that when you had the show coming? Why did Sky, I know Skyrim's the test bed? I always say it's a test bed. It's going to get right. everything new first. But when you look at the incoming show, like why wasn't that ready? Yeah. Like what is, the, what is going on over there where we continue to miss opportunity after, after opportunity with Fallout? No, I agree. And my thing is at minimum, let Todd oversee on an executive producer role so he still has some type of insight if he w- doesn't want to stay completely you know away from the project but you made a good point with Furcars as far as it, uh Marco as far as his comments about you know I don't want to die before we got to be real too like Tony ain't spring chicken anymore no so at the rate that they were if they uh, alleged go we can't have a series die with this man <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying like, like it's that's got to eventually go on to someone else it's right? got to so th- this is, we got a future play. It's the same thing we talk about the future of Xbox. Phil ain't going to be here forever, right? Mm-hmm. So at some point you have to future plan. So he's got to have that transition plan as far as, okay, we know how much it means to you, but at the same time, the reins has to go to someone else. And if someone else can involve, just like the TV series, right? Yeah. He's over there, they're doing it, but he's making sure they keep the essence and the spirit. And we see what type of a quality product that we have right now. To me, the same thing can be done. You need to get together, yeah, all three of y'all for for I was say Fargo, Kane, um, Fergus Marquardt, Todd Howard, get in the room, or y'all gonna create Vault Tech Studios <laughs> or something. Cause 343 got it for Halo. We're at that point now. We cannot go. 15, 20 years, talk about we ain't got a new Fallout game. I'm yeah. sorry. It's just yeah, unacceptable. It's just, and I'm going to be on your neck until y'all do that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just a, a business sensibility. I know it's a heightened emotion right now because we're True. looking at like, oh, Fallout, the TV show's Absolutely. out. Like, I want Absolutely. something new. But when you look at it, if you're Phil and his thing is like, I want to set up this business to thrive in the future. One of your number one goals, and I'm, I know I'm biased, so I, I totally admit that before I go in. One of your goals absolutely should be to set up Fallout in a place where it can continue to get support. Like, I love Todd dearly. I think he is my favorite creator in this industry. God, Everyone God. already knows that. I love yes. his games. You cannot continue to lean on this man, right? Like, you can see where the cracks show. I think, I think what we're seeing with the Fallout TV show and what we see with maybe Indiana Jones versus Careful. Starfield is like, Careful. this man's focus can only go to so many areas. Okay. And I think there are certain Respectful. oversights that typically don't happen when he is all in versus when he is split. So yeah. you got to help the guy out and not have him oversee yeah. another Fallout project, but like make the team that's going to be producing Fallout content. You can leave Elder Scrolls or Bethesda Game Studios. That's been their baby since day one. They should be the shepherds of that franchise. But mm-hmm. Fallout was a purchased property in 2006. Yes, yes good And point. yes, it's been theirs for almost two decades now. And they've done a lot of phenomenal things with it. New Vegas getting green lit and letting Obsidian do their thing. Fallout 3, 4... I'm not going to credit 76 much for the recovery <laughs> of it. The TV show, they've made their mistakes, but they've just like Interplay did. They made Fallout Absolutely. Tactics, which sucked. Yep. Brotherhood of Steel, which technically is, a, I like the game, but it's definitely not a Fallout game at all. It's arguably a bigger betrayal to the series sensibilities than 76. Mm. Um, like there's this series has such profound history that it's full of good and bad decisions. One of the best decisions that they can make right now, as it continues to rise in popularity, it's not tapering off, is give it. The, the consistent attention it deserves where you can count on something coming. I'm not saying you got to hit it like an automatic button 
Right. But make a studio or find a team that can at least handle Fallout for an entry or two. Yes. It is that type of property where it's been in so many hands, Interplay, Obsidian, Bethesda, mm -hmm. Kilter Films now. Mm -hmm. It's been so many places we've seen it can be handled well in so many places. So let it continue to be that. Its serious strength has always been the many creative minds in on it who understand and respect the material. Have Bethesda Game Studios be the shepherds. They have dedicated lore dudes in their building who pick up the phone for fucking Elder Scrolls Online. Mm, Let facts. that be the case for Fallout. Study up, make students out of them, and that'll be it. And just have a team dedicated to Fallout because it has been time. It is very clearly still time. And I don't think that's going to change. People are always going to want Fallout because it's, again, it, its themes are so powerful and prevalent that they communicate very strongly with people nowadays especially yes. as they get older and the realities of the world hit them Absolutely. with war and humanity yes. like it's just it's a series that will will be evergreen yeah and you nailed it and i think that my final comment is that's why fallout resonates with me because we know this is a potential reality that could happen with nuclear warfare and how you know things can change and yeah this this is this is something that you know, how, how would the world be in this type of condition and, and what, how, how length, the lengths of corporate greed and, and manipulation and things yeah. of that nature, it all falls into it. So yeah, I love it. You know, every aspect of it. So I'm pulling for them, man, but I, I think smarter minds will prevail. And hopefully, like I said, all yeah. you got to do Xbox PNG with a yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to do blue and yellow fonts. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. You will shake the building. I'm telling you. I think Fallout 3 Remaster will be just based on the fact that it leaked. I think that'll come first okay. for sure. Okay. And okay. I think that's an easy stop gap. And that's an exciting one that I would yeah. be happy to go back into. Many would be happy to go back into. Well, first. But you can only, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can only kind of like keep poking and be like, like a TV show was phenomenal. This is the best I could have ever imagined and asked yeah. for. It's not a game though. Right. Yeah, right. I'm not sure I'm saying that I'm grateful or greedy, but mm -hmm. I'm saying like we we're here because we love the games at the end of the day. You got to have the games ready, not these kind of side answers to it. Like these are a big part of the universe and they feel meaningful. But like even if I as Fallout 3 being a top three game of all time for me, like I want another I want a new Fallout experience. Yes, I want a absolutely. new game to play. Right. So yeah. we'll see where they go with it. Cog, any more thoughts on Fallout, Fallout 4, 76, the TV show that you want to express here before we move off of spoiler yeah. mode and into our last bit of news? Yeah. One never changes. What a, what a time. What a time. Mm -hmm. Just, I can't get enough. I can't get enough. That's how, how much of an effect this show had on me. Yeah. Blown away. Masterpiece level stuff for me. I agree. I agree completely. Watch it if you have yet to and you still decide to listen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Next up, coming soon to Xbox Game Pass. On April 17th, Orcs Must Die 3 comes to console, PC, and cloud. NHL 24 comes to console. Even in Chronicle 100 Heroes, day one Game Pass, console, PC, and cloud. I actually backed this one on Kickstarter. Really looking forward to it. Another Crab's Treasure arrives on April 25th on console, PC, and cloud. Manor Lords is on PC, Game Pass, April 26th. And Have a Nice Death arrives on April 30th on console, PC, and cloud. Meanwhile, Leaving Xbox Game Pass, get these in while you can. April 30th, all of them are gone. Seven Days to Die, Besiege, EA Sports NHL 22, Loot River, Piku Niku, and Ravenlock. All leave Game Pass April 30th. So, Cog, anything stand out to you here that you are excited about? Anything that you are interested in playing or that you have to get to before they leave Game Pass? I mean... It's time for the 100 heroes, right? It's time for my sweet in spiritual successor. I'm waiting for a long time. Shout out to one of my writers, uh, Chris Jones, man. He is, the way you are for Fallout is the way he is for sweet in oh. the creator of Iodin. Uh, he's so excited to look into and cover this game. You know, he's been talking about it for years. So even before when they had the spinoff. For such a long time. It's hard to believe. Yeah, so this is one of his first year. I can't wait. This is something I'm really pulling for, and it's good. You know, again, it will be a great Game Pass get. And as far as what's leaving, I remember you talked about, uh, was it Raven Lock? I believe. I could have yeah, sworn that. Well, yeah, you had mentioned that. So that's another one. But uh, yeah, man. And then oh, any any NHL for you, sir? Are you uh, nope. you're jumping back in? Nope. You're not gonna great timing, Rangers? though. NHL playoffs are about to begin. This is a smart addition. Very mm -hmm. good timing. Very get your Rangers in. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I'm a little scared for the Rangers just because they're president trophy winners. And like mm. they I mean, they when they won the cup in 94, they were president trophy winners. So like maybe Best magic game, strikes yeah. twice here. But but I 
I don't know, man. Like when you're when you're president of trophy winners, you're usually set up for a disappointing round in the playoffs. <laughs> but last year was so fucking disappointing. Mm. And I'm like, you can't go lower than that. Like they got embarrassed by a rookie team. Yeah. They got embarrassed. Like they won two in a row. We're like, oh, we're gonna fucking stroll into the semis, and they just got walked on for four games. Just <laughs> terrible, yeah. terrible. So I'm I'm really hoping to see this squad dig deep, but yeah, with NHL, I'm just I I I hate the NHL games. Like I truly I do. Like I just think they're terrible. Uh, they're such you. cash grabs. So I feel you. you know, I'd love for Midway to like come back and then bring back NHL hits. I'll play that. But yeah, mm-hmm. the NHL games from EA, I'm good. Like all good. I like EA. I think they're mm-hmm. doing much better work now. But their EA Sports Division can kiss my ass. Yeah, it's terrible. Not, listen, you know, you, I, certainly, I, yeah, you. Uh, I Mr. was on stage <laughs> going in on them. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> ain't no love laws. I still said they still haven't surpassed NFL 2K5 for the bad. Gotta series. try that just out of like curiosity. Bro, you have to all yeah. oh, the 2K series. They still to this day. That's the one with Terrell Owens on the cover. To this day, still have systems and the VIP stuff that. Madden still hasn't replicated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even some of the way the offensive line and defensive line interactions to this day still haven't replicated. Wow. So, yeah, it, it goes to show you when there is no competition with the sports league. Someone else, shout out to, um, I think my man um, J-Rock put something up and he he had like a, a, a image of all these cover arts of all these different MLB, NHL, NFL variety of sports games we came from the high heats the nfl blitz the nhl like all these great games remember when 989 oh there we nfl mm-hmm. fever remember yeah, nine, yeah. bro we used to have this variety with all the licenses bro the but microsoft now, game studio sports games were like my lifeblood as a kid bro, i love those I games loved those sega sports sn it was just i remember even ea at one point had an mvp baseball which oh, was yeah. a a solid addition and everyone had their take and i just missed that it's like now both leagues cash grabbed madden is our exclusive with nfl you know at least the show is decent right yeah. but you want competition in this space i just hate it because everything now becomes copy paste roster update yeah with minimal features and minimal innovation and i'm it's just like, like a super big low right now for it's been a low for bro for this for facts I'm, I'm from the days of nba live at least they used I to have a NBA like, live on the PS2, bro. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, I have 95. And it was on the cover. Ooh, that was, yeah. That's what I come from. So it's just, yeah, it's sad to see what sports games are. So I was just, I had to tease you. I was like, I wanted to see you what you NBA like. Showtime, the one with Kobe, or Courtside. That's what it was. Oh, yes, it was Kobe Bryant on the cover. One. Kobe Bryant on the cover. Yes. Yeah, that one was great, too. Games, I love bro. that. Absolutely. All right. Well, for me, I, I personally am very excited for Eden Chronicles 100 Heroes. And uh, that's one that I've been just itching to get my hands on, especially the kind of HD 2D art styles there. You know, Sweet and Creator unfortunately passed away. And so they don't, they, they passed away this year. So, like, right yeah. before the game's about to come out, uh, really sad to see. But yeah. uh, I'm hoping the game is fantastic because I think it mm-hmm. looks really good. Absolutely. All right. Game Pass Pick of the Week. I got the choice this week, and uh, mine's a broad selection, but it's an obvious one. Fallout. Uh, Xbox is the best place to play Fallout, truthfully. FPS boost across all these titles. So you got 60 frames on Fallout 76. You got 60 frames on Fallout 4. You got 60 frames on Fallout 3, on New Vegas, all available on Game Pass. Uh, These are all great selections, Uh, especially we had a write-in earlier talking about like, hey, where's the best place to start? And like, Mm -hmm. so you do it, free 99 tap in make sure you do it on game pass uh, again you you know with all the the fps boost options here makes it a really steady stable experience where like fallout was kind of known for crashing a lot um i had a buddy who was like playing fallout 3 and it kept crashing on him as well and i, I don't know I, I just must dodge a bullet with all of my bethesda game studios experiences <laughs> i just don't have these problems it's probably why i love their game so much because all i hear is people like oh it's miserable it keeps crashing and i just don't have these experiences with their games but certainly they're true because so many people say it but Hmm. yeah like pick your poison fallout 3 fallout new vegas fallout 4 fallout 76 they're all great on game pass they're all available all easy to pick up and all have their own pros and cons as we discussed earlier that make them worth checking out so that is my very broad game pass pick of the week but cog if you have any add-ins or things you want to narrow down from there by all means no you nailed it this is the time you know um it, like you said it best, Xbox is by far the best place to play it. You know, the 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 backward compatibility program as in conjunction with the frame uh the f- frame rate boost is just a no brainer. You know, I remember even seeing before the Fallout when they, you know, obviously they did Oblivion and all that stuff too. But Fallout at that fidelity and that frame rate is the way to go. And then of course you got even, you know, 
by the time this come out by next week, you know, the, even Fallout 4 will have that update. But yeah. right now, if you're getting into it, three, you know, Vegas, get in there, man. Get yeah. in there. Everything Fallout is there. And I'm actually going to download that that shelter, man. I, I remember how much fun I had with that mini game, yeah. too. Oh. Bro, yeah. Because the thing that was great about it is they didn't milk you for money. Like the microtransactions were really well controlled. And so I spent money because I felt like I was kind of ripping them off. I felt sort of bad about it. But Fallout Shelter is great, dude. I made yeah. tutorial videos on that and everything. Like I love Shelter. Like Bro. nowadays I don't play it much, but in that pre Fallout 4 hype day, what oh bro i was yeah. living on fallout shelter that's all Ooh, i could do absolutely and i, I do got Sass. an itch for three and, and three is so so special to be what in the monument I've, I've never yeah hmm? your favorite fallout i never asked like i i am i am biased towards three just because it was my first sure and I'm just gonna say it right now. I love when I went to the was it the super duper mini what thing? Yeah, and, you know what I'm saying? It was a nuke town and the decisions of what could happen, right? Like oh Megaton, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Megaton, Megaton, yeah, yeah. excuse me, Megaton, yes. You got black ops on the brain, man. I got black ops on the brain. Yeah, on the mind. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yo, I was just like, this game is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you could really affect change. And no disrespect to the Black Rock, because Obsidian's, the New Vegas is, is fire. It's just, I get it. It just, I remember, you know why? Three is because, shout out to Egan Mivy, who we've had on the final Duke at yeah. one point. You know, um, I came in as such a hater. And I think you told me about this. I came in as a Fallout hater. I was like, what's the hype? I don't get it. This thing looks looks nasty looking. Like, it don't look great. Like, why are people... And when it hits you, you're like, okay, I get it. And then it's something about me personally. I always feel, what do you call the character, the Pit Boy character? What is the Vault? Was he called Vault Boy? Yeah, Vault Boy. Any illustration with Vault Boy makes me laugh. Anything. Oh, dude, like, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Anything. He's, like any little iconography. He's trying something more. He's showing you a skill. The char- It's just the most funniest character design in a yeah. horrific world with this great music. It's, it's the perfect marriage. It's something about that game. It just, when it hits you, it's, it's all cylinders. So, yeah, salute, salute to um, Fallout 3. I, 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 I'm really looking forward to playing that again. That is that's my baby, man. Yeah. Yeah, I love Fallout 3, so I hear you on that. Mm -hmm. All right, we got one more question. That's your Game Pass pick of the week, and then we're out of here. This one comes from Fernando Emigon, and it was an interesting write-in that I remember specifically when I had asked about this uh, to the audience, and so I wanted to follow up. Greetings, spicy soldiers. Just a Slay Station 5 user wanted to give you gents their flowers. I always love hearing your thoughts on what the Xbox brand will have in store for the future. Maddie, you also said that you wouldn't mind explaining how monetization on YouTube works for you guys if someone asked. Well, I am asking. I just want my boys to get paid by our Google o- overlords. Missed you at Sacred 300, Maddie, and I love the Iron Lords with their opening show. Have a, I hope, soft Stradamus doesn't strike again kind of day. <laughs> yeah, that was a loud show reference. He was in his bag. He was in that. his bag. That was dope. Shout out to Fernando for writing in. And obviously, Cog, you, know, yeah. you can chime in on this because you've been doing the online business for a yeah, while. Yeah, but. Absolutely. um it's an interesting question, and I feel like I'm well rehearsed in this subject just because I get asked this all the time in person. It, when I meet people, I almost think it's kind of rude when I think about it a little bit longer. But like when I first meet people, like so you do YouTube, huh? Like yeah. How do you get paid? I'm like, you- <laughs> like why the fuck is it your business? <laughs> You how'd you make that money baddie i'm gonna yeah. be rich like you yeah how, how much do you make I'm, i always just don't tell them i'm just like yeah. like none of your business like yeah, you don't need much. to know my fucking income like exactly it's just people salivate over that shit man but i love the honest write-ins here because i did say if anyone's ever curious like i'll explain it because i do it all the time mm-hmm. so basically what happens is you know you, you make your video when you go to post it on youtube the way you get monetized is we just passed this on rewind you have to get four thousand watch hours across all of your videos thousand subscribers there's a couple other ways you can do it but those are like the two you got to hit to get monetized once you do so um you can either get partnered with a company which i am i work with union for gamers i have since 2012 uh they've always been really good to me they provide pretty generous bonuses annually because i have a good relationship with them and also uh they're they're really good with support like when i was buying a house uh, i needed like legal paperwork to prove what i did was my job like and, and mm-hmm. like where i uh list things they helped me set up like a, a business for my youtube side of things like they've helped nice. me do all this stuff so they're just really great super supportive so you can go that way they take a cut of your earnings which is fine or you can just go it alone like i know carrick for example of acg he yeah. goes it alone like he does yeah. full adsense just takes his check mm-hmm. and that's it i mm-hmm. like having the support i like having the option especially 
uh, these last two years of my life with everything, like with all these house changes, and everything, just yeah. having them there was was a massive, massive deal. I, I don't know if I would have had this house if I didn't have them. So um, they really helped out with that. But once you get partnered um, or not, um, you hit those prerequisites, you can get monetized. Uh, then whenever you upload your videos on YouTube, I'm sure as Cogacine, you'll you'll have like an earn tab that you just click on. Um, it says manage ad segments or something along line, those lines, manage monetization. And it just shows your video and then you get a whole timeline and it's usually automated. And I typically just leave it uh, or you can manually select like, hey, here's where your ads go in. Um, and so you can control kind of the pace of when they appear. So that's why some creators, I don't do this because it's it's such a pain in the ass that I don't want to think about money while I'm making my videos. It's the God's honest truth. But like like some creators will time their videos really well with where the ads fade in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I give them props. because I'm like, that's a level of thought that I just don't want to even give right now, but it gives their videos a really good flow. Mine are definitely more abrupt. So you'll just like, I'll be mid sentence and there I am. <laughs> um, so that's one way. And then as time goes on, like certain months pay more than others, because like, let's say it's the holiday time. Let's say it's December. Uh, then you're going to make a little bit more money because you know people are, are buying things. It's November. People are buying things for the holidays. Advertisers are pumping YouTube with more money, so they pay out more. Versus like January and February, where no one's buying anything because the holidays are over, and so mm-hmm. like no ad money is really getting put out. So you make considerably less. Like I, I had a video that made uh, it was my first first spoken review. It got like over half a million views in January of all months, and it made shit. I made like no money on it because Ooh. it was just, it was a fucking a dud month. Like you just don't get paid during those months at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's like, kind of, that's the game of YouTube. You just accept it for what it is. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, the run of it for, for each channel people do is you, you get to that point, you get monetized, those ads go in the videos. You don't mm-hmm. do it. You're like, some people think like I go in and I negotiate with like Manscaped and Apple or whoever's <laughs> pr- putting video ads. I'm like, I'm like, no, that's like YouTube and union for gamers. Like they just handle all that shit. Mm-hmm. It's automated. I just choose if the video can put on ads. You have to right. fill out an ad survey. Now that's something mm-hmm. that changed. So you have to list like, does your video have violence? Is it video yes. game violence? Yes. Does your, you have language. Mm-hmm. I had a few videos get demonetized because I cursed in them. And it's not a problem that you curse. You can curse and still get monetized. But if you curse and then don't market in the survey, they'll just shut off the monetization on your Ooh. video. They have a new thing now for altered content that you have to list like, hey, have you altered this video? Have you used AI to change anything? Voices, Ooh. images. Have you represented someone who didn't say anything before in Ooh. this video? Like, have you altered that? Uh, obviously, it's a very proactive move, but it's smart. Um, right. So that's kind of like a new change there. But yeah, you have to answer like a couple of questions every time you upload a video and then that's it. And then as time goes on, that generates revenue. I get paid out monthly by my partnership company. So yep. I get paid uh, like around the first five days of every month alongside like last stand and Patreon and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it all comes in in chunks and it just teaches you how to manage your money over the course yes, of a month. Uh, what I have found is just an added bonus here is uh, I used to make way more with ad, like YouTube ad revenue years ago not because view- my viewership is better than it's ever been it's mm-hmm. because uh, like they just don't pay as much anymore like youtube yeah. does not pay out nearly as like half as much i would almost go to the extent of saying based on my memory of like certain months like fallout 76 came out oh bro i thought i was gonna be set for life <laughs> that man oh, thought it was ready yeah i thought i was i was like <laughs> oh if i can get a couple more months of this this will be great <laughs> and I, I and that was i've heard money like i've talked to fighting cowboy before that dude makes souls like guides so you can imagine Ooh, like this dude makes cowboy. fucking bread like Ooh. yeah there are people who make a lot of money i've never seen that kind of money before but like uh as the time has gone on you know ad revenues paid out considerably less so i've done more sponsored content than usual uh Same. just out of like hey i have people i i hire a ton of people right so mm-hmm. and all the money really doesn't go back to me it goes into those people goes so right it's back you know, into it so Same. it's like i'm not i'm not getting rich off of any of this like i i you know i make enough to to make a living but i don't make enough to like go buy an amazing car or anything like that like i'm really happy because like I would, I don't want to be rich. Like I just want to make things. And I and like, it's a YouTuber who says it's actually, it's a Mr. Beast mentality. Like I just, mm-hmm. I just need to make enough to make things. Like I don't need to make sure. enough to just go put stuff in my savings account. Like I'm fine. Like, you know, it's, we're, we're good. So that's kind of my goal. Um, and that's where I'm at, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of the, the, the money making scheme on YouTube. It's, uh, some people are driven by the almighty dollar and, and kind of like 
go hardcore on things. I will say that as like a last thing because I've Ooh. seen a few people like when what? I opened Retro Rewind, like a few people Let's were go. like, it's clear he just wants the money. I'm like, I don't think people get it. Yes, like because Colin has said this about Sacred. It's the same thing with me. Like if I just wanted, like if I truly, genuinely just Maddie wants money. I would not fund a game for starters. <laughs> that's the riskiest fucking thing I can do. I would not pay out that much per month to fund a game. That's for starters. I would not have made rewind. I might not have even made retro rebound. Mm. I would just pump Mr. Maddie. I have two editors. I could have pumped Mr. Maddie seven days a week. I ignore a shit ton of ad offers that I get because mm-hmm. there's just some really bad ones out there that pay well, but I don't feel comfortable doing. I only do ads I'm comfortable doing. So I would take every ad do videos seven days a week, pump it full of Bethesda and Xbox content and collect my check and go home and not interact mm-hmm. with any of you. But mm-hmm. I do this for the love of the game. Truly, believe it or not, I'm lucky to make a living off of it, but I do love what I do. And I just, I always find it interesting when people say that, because it goes to what Colin said about like the parasocial interactions. People see what you're doing. They make assumptions on that. Yep. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a pretty gross assumption as someone who's like, I think you can hate me, but I think people can at least agree. Like, I'm pretty creatively energized. Like I at least, I don't know if I'll do them well, but I at least want to make shit. Oh yeah. Hopefully not actual shit, but I want to make stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I, I didn't want to turn this into a diatribe about myself. I want to hear from you, sir, like how how your business operates, you know, is it roughly the same? Like how do things run? Cause you run a website too. So I don't know shit about that side of the fence. If you ever want to. That side is even harder, man, because obviously the, the, the climate has changed, right? Where it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, we have the age of the content creator. We have the age of the, the YouTuber and people who want to get their news from dedicated sources as, a, as, as opposed to traditional media. Mm-hmm. The, the Lords of Gaming.net arm was more so the, to formally get in the rooms of areas where traditional content creators are still not respected sometimes. And we, we, me and you have these conversations where just like, okay, only these outlets are getting this coverage. Yeah. There's still a little bit of a disconnect, but um, as far as the YouTube side to Fernando's comment, pretty much everything you said, you know, we've had a little bit of a harder role because traditionally, you know, let's be honest, making videos on YouTube is the way to go. If you do a podcast, what we do, it's harder. It's a slow growth. So we're very fortunate for the growth that we do have because, you know, generally YouTube wants you to make consistent videos. We are a live show podcast that celebrate content creators, celebrate developers, you know, and the movers and shakers in the industry. And we've been fortunate to get growth that way as as well as, you know, getting other type of guests on. So, yeah, I would say, you know, obviously managing your finances because obviously the YouTube money comes in. It's a monthly situation. You know, one thing that really helped us is um, kind of forming an LLC. And and really taking the business aspect of it serious. Very fortunate to have Saf, you know, with us on that. He's always making sure that we're doing the right things and making frugal steps and moves. And to your other point, you know, I think, you know, as someone we've been doing it since what, 2017, 2018, mm-hmm. you know, and work extremely hard. We're one of the few podcasts that actually goes to live events together and kind of, you know, I would say pioneer that, but made that part of our stable. So for us, we are looking for opportunities because at the end of the day, as much as we love it, you know, we, we do get frustrated that people expect you to do this thing. And, and mind you, we go sometimes podcast four or five hours, you know, because we're just having a ball and having a good time. You know, I do, we do find a little bit, you know, I'll say resentment when some people are like, oh, now they have a sponsorship. Oh, see, this is what's going on. And it's like, bro, like we're supposed to do this just for the love of the game, but never be compensated for all of our hard work. Yeah, never be like that part. I think there is some entitlement by some people. And I'm, it is exactly that, dude. A lot yeah. of people don't get it. And I think a lot of people would be far worse than guys like us in our situation where I was scared, too. I remember when I first started doing sponsorships, I was worried. And then, yeah, I got to be honest. I saw dudes like Skillup, who I highly respect, Jake Baldino, who I highly respect, yeah. doing different, like sometimes game related sponsorships. And I'm like, people love and respect these dudes too. I'm like, why can't I do it? I'm, exactly. The only person stopping you from doing that is either silent majority or or, right. or loud minority, or of course right. yourself. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I, like people can miss me with that part, mm-hmm. you know, with this, Oh, you know, this moral thing, because at the end of the day, you know, as long as you pick things that you are comfortable with and morally comfortable with, yeah. that to me is what it's about. And those are the type of decisions that we have made. And I think it's we've been very fortunate in that regard. You know what I'm saying? Not the you know, black. I remember when we got the, we got the NCXT thing. I was just like, wow, this is yeah. 
huge. It's humbling. It's humbling. You know, it's when Atlas humbling. reached out to me and I know yeah. Sega reach out to you about oh, Infinite Wealth, bro. bro, it's an amazing feeling. It's very validating. I know at the end of the day, it's a business exchange. I shouldn't even say these companies, not because we can't, but the reality is like, I think a lot of people don't know. I at least I don't make contact with these companies. I have yeah. there's like an agency in between. I never interact with Sega or mm-hmm. what company I've sponsored before, like Bandai. Like I don't yeah. interact with any of these companies directly. It's always, mm-hmm. always like an agency that, that just reaches says, like, out. Here's the offer. Would you be interested in this? Like it's never a direct contact. And mm-hmm. I only take offers when it comes to games. Like if I dude, I've done two sponsored videos where like I did it for Outcast and I did it for Intrider where Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just like, can I say what I want to say? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, then I'll do it. And like, I wasn't glowingly positive on either of those games. I was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, they're they're all right. And like, I'm going to tell the truth because it's like, I'm not, if you want to pay me for that, okay. But like, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie to people and be like, it's fucking amazing, dude. (laughs) I've seen people who do videos for for the same games because they go out in waves. Like, it's not just me getting those offers. And I see dudes who are, definitely gassing them up a little bit hoping to get that next check and i'm like you could come around once or twice or three times or just once at all like i don't care but like i'm not mm-hmm. gonna lie about that shit like no you can't you can't you because can't, your audience man. your audience will stiff it and we're very listen i will say about you know ilp even what i'm gonna do it's like we have we're very fortunate one of the most loyal and passionate communities yeah. i have ever seen i mean i there's times where they just want to keep us around. Like, hey, you you help us get through our day. We're super chatting to keep you here because we yeah. we having a good time. Amazing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that kind of stuff really touches me. And that's why we go all out. We're one of the few that reads every super chat. We we do not yeah, you guys take are hard. advantage of our base. We don't take that for granted at any because we know what it was to be five subscribers and 10 people in the chat and yeah. yo what's up bro you ain't watch the show today you supposed to be my man what's up like i would mm-hmm. call it was, me and king was bad we were like yo you how you supposed to be the homie in real life and you ain't <laughs> watching nile like bro we cut people off and, <laughs> and wow. people, like, people didn't realize we were taking this podcast thing serious they thought it was a joke and old mm-hmm. talk and yeah, then people realized okay nah we gotta support no that kind totally of thing. i totally yeah. hear that bro yeah the, the thing that mo- it's so funny because that kind of motivate me when i was younger is like you know a lot of people kind of like scoff at the idea of me doing youtube and i was like you don't understand what you just did like that is my biggest motivator which is like you, you tell me no i'm like you can't Facts. do that and i'm like okay like now i Ooh. really feel like i can do this <laughs> and, and that was me in, in in all of high school bro i got teased a shit ton for what i was doing and like Facts. you know my friends gassed me up a little bit i don't want to even say what they say but like mm. they gassed me up a little bit now versus like the people used to make fun of me and it's like you know i don't wish ill on them but yeah. like is it definitely a little validating to be like you know what it was worth it like a hundred percent so that i think when you have those stories like i know people who reach out to me like in fact i've interacted with patrons who Mm kind of just want the youtube paper like they sign up because i do consulting they're like yeah i want to like do youtube as a job like it's great but they think about the money i always tell people you will get nowhere nowhere think about the money it's so backwards right like yeah think about the money make your money and that's it but you will get absolutely nowhere if you think about that money it will your, number one your audience will sniff it out number two your passion will run out because you'll realize i could go make money elsewhere quicker exactly. it takes time to make money on youtube at all Facts. at all it's people, it's really difficult you nailed it people can sense and sniff out if you're genuine or oh, this person's a fraud like and that's why they come back because they like yo this is the real deal maddie's the real deal cog's the real deal like i love these guys you guys get me through it and yeah that's what it's about man so it's been a fun journey we still got more left to yes, right sir. on the chapter but yeah shout out to fernando on asking that question and yeah. um yeah that it, it, it's a grind for sure you got to be committed we have our ups we have our downs sure we're human just like anyone else you know what i'm yeah. saying but when you see that when you see that growth and you start to st- see the fruits of that it really is inspiring because it, also you love to do it so now you get rewarded yeah. for something that you yeah. love to do yeah like pax was really rewarding just getting to yes. see so many members of the audience that was really validating like that type of stuff just gives you that push to, to keep going um you brought up it's funny you brought up the llc shit and like one thing i'll just warn people about is like self-employment Ooh. taxes are not only fucking <sighs> brutal <laughs> bro 15th just came by yeah oh we boy. are in a brutal bracket <laughs> sam sam came through on the yeah. big color yeah the tax man was not happy <laughs> this year and uh yeah i'll just warn Ooh. people about that you think it's good when you see the check and then you realize how much you got to give to the government Ooh. i learned the hard way when i was in first year of college Mm. and i got hit with a bill from the irs and my eyes popped i went what <laughs> and then i learned about estimated tax yeah. payments yes. and yes. that was all it took for me to be yes. a good 
little mm-hmm. lad and pay my taxes every quarter because I didn't know any better at the time. Mm-hmm. And I, I paid that bill and I was like, never again would the tax man <laughs> sneak up on me. Facts. You learned yeah. those lessons. That is that is so true. It's, Absolutely. Yeah, so just a warning to people, not official legal or tax advice, advice. but just, uh, just a heads up mm-hmm. when you go that self-employment route. Yes. That is something that sneaks up on everyone. So Lely's going self-employment. I was honor. I'm like, make a separate saving account. Saving account. Take take 29, 30% every check. Put it in that account. It's Put money it you never made. It's money mm-hmm. you never made. Facts. Every time, bro. Got to, Every bro. Time. Otherwise, they are coming. Yes, they will not <laughs> let you go. <laughs> it's bad. Oh, you big town YouTuber, huh? Yeah. I got hit one time because you transfer your money, in my case, from like a PayPal account to, to your bank account. And mm-hmm. so they saw the income of the bank account and they thought the PayPal was separate. So they get oh, off one time, bill me, and they're like, yo, where's all that money? <laughs> I was like, I sent them my PayPal transactions for a full year. Some wow. poor fucker at the IRS had to go through like 40 pages of my no, transactions. My and I just never heard back from them. Yeah. That was it. That was it. So that's yeah, that's how it goes. They hit you up. They're like, yo. And then you give them the proof and they're like, back into the shadow. Back, hey, no hey, response, hey, nothing. No response, like, no nothing. But let you owe them. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's still funny. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wrap things up here. Cog, a phenomenal show, a fallout yes. filled show. Sir, yes. any closing thoughts? I think our hashtag's obvious in a DD fallout. But Come on, any DD closing fallout, thoughts? You already know. No, nah, this is a fantastic one. This was, I'm looking forward to this one. I'm happy for you, man. I'm just, you got to glow right now. You got to oh, glow. You're like vindicated, you know, to <laughs> see. No, I'm just, that is just vindication. More so like to see something you love that you've always loved, that you've been there. This is that, what is that, that day one, what we call it, the sweater energy, what we called it? What was what was the the, the, the line that we had? The that flannel. You, like, you, flannel, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your day one flannel. And now the <laughs> world is like, yo, that flannel, Maddie Rocket is yeah. <laughs> Like I love this. They, they made it, they put it in every department store. Yeah. And now they're like, yo, this the quality of this. Wow. <laughs> And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I told like y'all, panel, welcome. Man. Like, yeah. that's what I see you. So I'm like, I couldn't wait to do Duke today because I was just like, I want to know how he's radiating <laughs> right now. What's it's, the energy? It's almost kind of sad, but I'm not afraid to admit, like, when Fallout's doing well, like, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Fallout, bro. Like, I really do. So when I get some good Fallout in my DNA, like, it just, it, it's, like a, it's like a curative. It really yes. is. I'm, like I was yes. already feeling really great. Like I just feel like I've kind of hit my stride with my health mm. in, in many ways. And so I'm, I've just been feeling good these last two months, but like, man, when a fallout hit, mm. I was like, this is a great year so far, man. Impacts like, and the right away is up right now. Yeah, yeah. Feel that. Absolutely. Yeah, you no, feel I it special. You. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you recognizing that, man. Yes, Thank this you, is man. you. I was like, I'm, I'm just happy. So, yeah. and for me, I never watch something with just smiles on my face. Yeah. What's the next episode? I got to see yeah. that. It, it, it was just so good. The yeah. tension, the humor, la- legit laugh out loud moments. Well, I'm like, you want to make my explode? Like, that was. Yeah, I was like, she's like, what's up with the sex, though? What's up? We going to get that pop? Yeah. I was like, hey, yeah, yo. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's wild in this show. Cousins, it doesn't matter, bro. Oh, the incest was. Yeah. I was like, yo, they are outside yeah. with this. Yes. Oh, yeah, Fallout. That was, see, those were like callbacks to like Fallout 1 and 2. Like, those had yes. wild sex humor, but they, like the, the current ones, like, you know, they go like, you go to romance someone, it fades to black. It's yeah. very tame nowadays. Very tame. Oh, no, no, no. Fallout 1 and 2 did not hold back, though. No. <laughs> A shout out to the brother. He also became a fan of mine towards the the the, the brother, the younger brother, the loose. Norm, yeah, yeah. Norm, yeah, yeah. Look there. But now nah, this yeah. was a fantastic week, and I can't wait. I got to get back to the wastelands. The fallout's in the air right now. So, yeah, got to be Fallout DD or DD Fallout, whatever. It's got yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. DD Fallout. Ladies and gentlemen, you got this deep. You want to let us know your thoughts? I'm at G27Status on Twitter. Cog is at Lord Cognito. Use the hashtag DD Fallout. Let us know your thoughts or put it in the comments down below. Again, hashtag DD Fallout. We're looking forward to hearing from you. And with that, enjoy the wasteland. And we'll catch you next week for episode 173 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. Peace. Out. Out. Crawl out through the fallout. Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast, is a product and trademark of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is recorded from the United States of America. The show is conceived by Matthew Mr. Matty Play Schroeder and me, Colin Moriarty, and is written and produced by Matthew Schroeder. Maddie's co-host is Barry Lord Cognito Eversley. Defining Duke's executive producer is Dustin Furman, and the show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. 
As you know, all of Last Stand Media's shows, including Defining Duke, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer support level on Patreon, and we're thankful for your kindness and generosity. 